All right. Y'all hear me okay? Mic on? You guys okay? Good? Everybody good? After, after your snowmageddon last night? Just, you're just kidding. This is my eighth time in, um, in, in Denver slash Colorado area this year. Uh, I was just, yeah, I just saw some of you guys a couple weeks ago, right? Uh, yeah, when, when they announced the, over, the, uh, over the airport, like intercom, while we're in the plane, that it, it's snowing in Denver, half the plane freaked out. It was, it was kind of cool. Like, ah, now we're going to be all right. Um, you guys good? Everything good? All right. How, uh, just real quick before I start, um, how do you all do this? Do you, do you, do you guys want to just blast through this as, as quickly as humanly possible? Because we have three hours together. You all know that? That's how much it's scheduled me for. Uh, how do you all do this? Break? Halfway through, check your emails and all that stuff, and then we can get out. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. My bladder. My bladder is. I've been told to stay hydrated uh, while I'm here, so my uh, my my bladder is about this big as well. So uh, yeah. So we'll do. We'll we'll go halfway through this. When you guys feel you need a break, raise your hand. But I'll just plan on going halfway through and then give you a break, and then we'll kind of get through the rest of it as quickly as you can. Okay. Because uh, I'm one of those guys that's pretty cognizant of your time. Um, no CE, but I wanted to wanted to uh, you know kind of get through to you guys that you know three after three hours today that hopefully you'll leave here with one if not a dozen things to do in your business. Um, my name is Nobu. I've been in this I've been in, in the industry since 1993. It says 96 on my bio, but 93 uh, unofficially when uh, my parents caught me making fake IDs and parking passes for my buddies in, uh, in, in high school and said, you need to start using your passes for some good. The, you know, this whole real estate brokerage thing, they're going online, they need your help building stuff. So I started uh, in real estate in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, got into real estate in, uh, in uh, California, Washington State, and in Minnesota before going, going under the NAR side. Sold a couple hundred million dollars worth of real estate um, during that time. Uh, my wife now is the realtor in Chicago. She'll sell about $80 million worth of real estate this year on her own, um, not including the 20 to 30 million that she's going to send off to her buyer's agent and everything else. Um, and, and, and it's the stuff that she's doing and agents around the country that are doing that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today. Um, at the end of the day, what you all do is really important to regular people like me. Uh, I have now bought two homes without uh, having access to the MLS out of the nine that I've bought total. And I'll tell you that uh, I forget. I forgot everything about what you guys do. I said things that I wanted to punch myself in the face for if I was my client, right? Um, little things like, I, I was the guy that, 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 that squibbled over $500 in a half million dollar real estate deal for the principle of the thing, right? Real estate's not like riding a bike, man, okay? And what you guys do is important, how you convey it now, the value of what you do, the reasons why I trust you, that stuff has changed big time, okay? Um, my job now at NAR, I've been there, it's been, been, been working for NAR now for a little over seven years, is to keep track of what's happening in the industry, not only within, but outside the industry and how it affects you guys. Uh, my job is to go and, and make relationships with all the people that freak you out uh, and, and really to find the people that are going to be the next people that freak you out and to convey what it is that you guys, or what they do to uh, add value to, the, to the, the transaction, to add value to the uh, relationships that we build and go from there, okay? Uh, today is just about business. While I, they asked me to talk about social media stuff, um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that um, if you haven't figured it out, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Your job is to be Facebookable now. Right, I think the big issue that I'm seeing on the, on social media in general is the lack of professionalism. Uh, the lack of professionalism has been dogging this industry for about a hundred years now, and uh, we have, for a hundred years, been trying to figure out how to fix it. Um, but I'll tell you, the the bad apples out there are making it really, really bad for the rest of us. How many of you guys here are uh, are managers at all, or broker leaders? Anybody here? A couple of you guys. Um, how many of you guys been here in the, in the business more than 10 years? Okay. How many are brand new, like a couple of years in? Cool. Two months? Well, good for you for being here, right? Learn good habits, man. That's the thing. Here's the thing about my wife, right? 
So if you're a new agent, newish agent in this room, uh, we just moved to Chicago. We just moved. The great thing and also kind of the weirdest thing about this business is that people really don't care about expertise. They care that they trust you, okay? And you have to figure out what made you successful in your previous lives and then carry that over into real estate. You need to outwork the hell out of your competition because most people think that this day and age is fantastic. Um, you also need to spend more money than what a lot of folks are doing because most people, when the, when the going is good, they retract, right? Because I don't need to do anything. I don't, I, I'm just sticking a sign in the ground and it's selling. Your job is to build a book of a portfolio of work of awesome that makes people want to use you. We're going to talk about all that stuff today. We're going to talk about marketing. We're going to talk about technology. We're going to talk about, uh, I'm even gotten to the point where now if folks are asking me about apps again, it's like 2005 all over again. Um, but uh, there are some really good stuff out there that you can use. How I like to break things up when we're talking about all of this stuff is, is the before, during, and after tr transaction um, experience that people have. Um, if you can buy something or use something that matters before, during, and after the transaction, that's all that matters now. It's all that matters now, okay? Use processes, systems, uh, technology, marketing pieces that matter before, during, and after the transaction. What you'll find is that um, in this business, we spend a lot of money on garbage. There's never been a better time to be a real estate technology vendor because it's cheap. It is really cheap to sell you crap that you don't need guys, okay? Really cheap. What used to cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a month, now is pennies. A really good CRM, 15 bucks a month. You know? An app for you to put your face on in an emoji on a, on a video of your next listing. That's like five bucks a month. That's stuff you couldn't even do a couple years ago, right? We all have, now have supercomputers sitting in our pockets, right? These things. There's more computing power in this thing that landed the, the first moon mission on the moon 50 years ago. To tell you a lot about these phones. Um, my job is to tell you now that the concepts behind it are all that really matter. It's not just about these phones. It's about that they're, they're now $1,000 each. I can do so much with it. It's a portal to my world. And I replace it every two years, every two, three years, okay? When we're talking about before, during, and after the transaction, it's less about you and more about your clients. We need to hyper-focus on our clients now more than ever. And specifically for you, you need to hyper-focus on the customers you don't even have yet. Right now, you should be shifting into next year's business. Period. End of story. Nothing about the rest of this year is about this year. Everything about the rest of this year is about next year. You're no longer in sales. You're not. You don't sell anything. Actually, I will say that the most you sell is you to me. Because there are 4,000 agencies in this association that I can use on my next home buy sell transaction. 4,000. I have a choice. And not only do I have a choice on 4,000 agents just in this market, in, in this area, because it's not even including Denver Metro, another 10,000 there, something like that, something ridiculous, right? Um, it's the fact that uh, I now have an option to sell my house to some, some dude, some dude in, based in Silicon Valley in three days and in three clicks, okay? That's my choice now as a consumer, at least in my head. Why are we worried about what technology companies are doing? And that's the thing that we see, I see too much of now, is that we try to get too techy. I, 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 it's, like, it's, it's, it's like, again, 2005 all over again. Folks are wanting to know, how do I use Instagram in my business? Don't worry about it. Because if you're on it right now and you're using it weirdly, you're weirding people out. You're weirding them out. Okay? Go to where your clients are. Go to where your previous sphere is. Be Facebookable with them. Because right now, what, what Facebook is, and don't fall into the trap of, uh, of, of, of Instagram for real estate classes, okay? Um, what Facebook is now, social media is now, is proof positive that you're not doing any work for me. I can see all the time you're wasting. Okay? Use technology to hyper-focus before, during, and after the transaction. Your marketing, we'll talk about marketing. Actually, we'll talk a lot about marketing now on social media, on your website. Your marketing should get people into the real world, offline, into the real world. Period. 
everything about your systems and processes need, need, really need to remove friction and add convenience to my experience. Because the best of technology and systems and processes now that I'm using does exactly that. It removes friction, right? And how much you, and with really good marketing, set expectations with me as your next consumer is the trick, okay? I don't need you anymore for listings. I don't need you anymore to open up a door, right? I need you to help me find the right home. I don't need you to help me sell a house because really, I mean, I have technology to do that. I need you to help me sell my home for the most money in the shortest period of time. Help me find that buyer on the other side. And when it comes to relationships, uh, I, I, I can't stress enough that you need to be a lot more relationally driven rather than transaction. Like we're, we're here in the United States, we, we sit there and, and, and really love on the fact that we're relational. My, my, my SOI, my sphere of influence is my number one, uh, my number one uh, supplier of business. But very few of us actually act on that. CRM. Use a CRM. It could be an Excel freaking spreadsheet. Just use something that allows you to not only after the transaction, figure out who your A-list clients are. You could have five right now, but you need to prepare for 5,000, okay? Who's your A-list client? Who's your B-list client? Who's your C-list client that you just want to forget about, put into a bucket, kick over, put over here, right? This is what technology can do. And that's what we're going to talk about today, right? And we'll talk about all the pitfalls that we're, we're seeing out there, more, uh, uh, along with the, the stuff that how we can use, uh, how we can use this stuff uh, positively, okay? So t about technology, there's no such thing as perfect tech, none. There's no such thing as a perfect CRM, none of it. There's no such thing as perfect anything. You gotta keep in mind, guys, just spe specifically on real estate, there will be six million homes that'll sell this year, six million, okay? And every single one of those transactions and experiences are gonna be different. So you can't have one piece of technology that is one size fits all with all of it. You can't, it's impossible. Why? Because with every transaction, there's you, right? And then there's a buyer, there's a seller, and all these other 25 people that are involved with the transaction. There's the buyer's mother-in-law and father-in-law that, that are involved with it. On the sell side, you know, you've got 85, uh, 85 family members giving unsolicited advice. You'll never find a perfect piece of technology. But, guys, we talked about before, during, and after the transaction, we're good. And two, if you figure out what it is that you're doing, what's it, what technology you can use to, again, remove friction and add to convenience, you're gonna be fine. You need to audit that when you get home. Audit it all. Is your CRM allowing you to seamlessly interact with your previous A-list clients? Does your CRM allow you to seamlessly and frictionlessly communicate with your existing clients to add a little bit of trust and confidence during the transaction? And before the transaction, does your technology, does your CRM, does, any, does your business process allow me to discover if I'm not ready to buy or sell? That's the trick. Is it, it, does it allow me, does it tell me I'm not ready? And will it allow me to cement trust with you until I am? Because your job now, your job is going to have to be squeezing every single person out of somebody who isn't ready earning all that trust, giving them confidence so that they give you their, their friends and their family until they are. How many of you guys ever had a story where like you had a buyer it took three years to buy, two years to buy? All you guys, right? I mean, how can you get their friends and their family? That's what you're gonna have to do, right? Systems, processes, marketing, technology, all that stuff needs to, needs to, needs to uh, uh, cement that deal, right? Social media. Um, I'll just approach it from this point of view. How many of you guys here are kids, like teenage kids? Have you asked them where they are? What do they say? What do they say? What's that, Snapchat, right? You know where they're not? Everything that you're paying for classes for. Do you know that? You know that? Your kids aren't on Facebook. Did you ask them why? That's where old people go to argue with each other. That's what, that's what they view Facebook as, right? 
right? And they're going from Facebook to things like Instagram. Look at Facebook in general. Facebook has gone from, um, look at my cereal that I'm eating today, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not lambasting that. I'm just saying that that's what you can do now. Uh, but they're going from putting, look at the cereal that I just ate on a public page to look at all the cereal I'm eating with all the other people that are eating cereal in a closed group, right? Um, even Facebook has said, anything public is an advertising platform. They basically said it. And Facebook now is going into groups. Have you seen the groups that they're in? I mean, the groups aren't even real estate related. My neighborhood in Chicago has got its own Facebook group. Not even my neighborhood. My little enclave, of, enclave community of 225 townhouses and single family homes in a gated community has its own Facebook group. Five houses sold without a realtor in that Facebook group. Guys, right? Everyone's going into groups. They're getting away from people because right now social media is a dumpster fire, right? People arguing with each other. And folks, what they're doing now is going to places where they can have co commonality and similarity with other people, whether it's neighborhoods. It could be a neighborhood. Uh, in Chicago, there's a, there's a um, Facebook group called Mama Tribe where 15,000 expecting mothers go to ask for advice from each other in the city of Chicago. My wife, my wife has made a couple hundred thousand dollars in commissions from that group alone. Okay? No one tweets anymore. And if it wasn't for this president, I'm serious when I say this, and if it wasn't for this president, um, Twitter would be a dead platform. They had zero net user growth last year because of all of the fake profiles that the company shut down. People are going to Snapchat. Why are they going to Snapchat? It's a little group. It's only me and my friends. So if you're talking about your listings in Snapchat, knock it off. No one cares about your listings. They don't. No one cares. LinkedIn's your resume. It's a friend of mine calls it the depleted pants of social media, right? It, that's, that's fine. Is it up to date? Go there. It's great. But LinkedIn also changes 20 times in a given year. They had groups in LinkedIn. Now no one, go, no one cares about groups. It's all about your resume now. That's where you can talk about yourself. Facebook owns Instagram and everyone wants to go, how, to use, how do I use Instagram now? Go ahead. Yeah, Nextdoor is another, another example of that, right? Nextdoor is a self-enclosed group. It's a social media group. Anybody in Nextdoor now? Man, it's everything I didn't and didn't want did and didn't want to know about my neighborhood, right? It's it's literally where people go to shake their fists at kids on their lawn, right? But but that but the thing is though, right? It's it's I know it's my neighbors. I, I know these folks. They have listings now. Do y'all know that? They have listings. Not only do they have listings, they are starting to do um, they're starting to do uh, automated valuations of listings. Did y'all know that? I just got my first one a couple weeks ago. They're telling me how much my townhouse is worth in Lakeview. Right? Next door is. Next door is. Why? Because we're giving them information. And they're taking all the for sale stuff, all the sold information, and turning it into a valuation. That should tell you a lot, though, that that information is coming directly to me through a channel that I trust. Right? I, tr I trust that channel because I've, I've been yelling at my neighbors in it for the last three years. Right? But now it's telling me the value of my home in order to call a realtor. Everything's an advertising thing. That's what you got to remember is that everything online, social media or not, is an advertising platform. Everything. Including Google, by the way. Google's an advertising platform. The biggest one. But what Google is, what Nextdoor is, what Facebook is, what Instagram is, I do it for the gram. It's a verb. It's a verb. You need to be a verb. Okay? When it comes to social media, We'll talk about the concepts for it. Concentrate on, on, on being Facebookable instead of being tweetable, right? Concentrate on, on being a verb. You're, are you doing the things that make people want to share your brand on their Facebook page? That's what you need to do. Are you doing things and marketing things and making yourself so useful that people want to tweet about you? If you have your clients tweet about you, Facebook about you, Instagram about you, that's 90% of the work, guys. And it's a great way to take your brand and put it out there, right? But in general, knock this off. We are weirding people out, especially our kids. Also keep in mind that everything, everything online right now isn't about you. 
we're in this kind of weird transition period, both societally and in, in, in the industry, um, where folks are navigating. We're trying to figure out who the end user is going to be. Rest, rest, in, rest knowing that nothing about what it is that's happening online is about you. It's about your kids. My, my kid's three years old, OK? Um, watches YouTube. Watches kids open up toy boxes on YouTube. Okay, he knows how to navigate a YouTube page on an iPad. He knows how to buy stuff on an iPad, <laughs> accidentally, right? But that's another thing to keep track of, or uh, to take into heart too, is what you're deploying easy to understand, easy to use, useful, helpful. Okay, stuff we're going to talk about. Marketing. I can smell commission breath on all of your marketing. I can smell it. And what's weird in general is that uh, I, look at, I look at real estate marketing now that I'm not in the sales uh, end of things every day. It's like y'all are marketing to other realtors. Have y'all noticed that? 3BR, 2BA, Charm and Car. That doesn't mean anything to me. Historically low interest rates. We've been saying that for 30 years now, literally 30 years. Now there's no inventory to have an, the opposite conversation about it, right? But all of the marketing that I'm seeing now, that's the biggest eye-opening thing for me as a, as a kind of a regular consumer now, is that everything that I see coming from the industry is like you're marketing to each other. Stop using realtor lingo in your marketing, right? That is gonna become extremely effective when you're fighting an iBuyer. iBuyer, great example of that. No one knows what iBuyer means outside of this room because no one calls it iBuyer outside of this room. They just call it buyer, <laughs> right? They don't really care who they're selling their house to. No one cares. You say things like equity. You're losing, you're leaving equity on the table by selling your house in three days and three clicks. You know, but what, what I am getting is confidence and certainty. Whereas what I get from you guys on the other end of things is may maybe if you give me 30 days, I might be able to sell it for more. You see where marketing needs to kind of catch up to what's happening out there, right? So when it comes to this stuff, stop it with the sameness. Stop it with the sameness. Everything looks the same. Rip we are at peak rip off and duplicate in real estate. We're at peak. Stop doing it. Start ripping off and duplicating things like Google, right? What is Facebook doing really well? What are all these other companies doing really, really well? Right? Talk like a human being. We'll talk about all that in a minute. But if it's about lead generation, you're going to lose. Generating leads now is actually fairly easy if you do it right. It's curating them that's the problem. Because you got to keep in mind that um, the last two, three years in this business have been a total aberration. Total. The people who can buy and sell and had confidence to do it and wanted to do it, they did it. And they did, it, they did it at rates that were unprecedented, so much so that they bought up all the inventory that was available. And now all you have left are folks that have something holding them back. They're holding them back, right? Uh, look what's happening out there economically, OK? People aren't making any more money than they were 10 years ago. They're saving at a reduced rate, which is why first-time home buyers are getting older. You're in, a, you're in a destination market. You all know that. You're cheap California, right? So you're, people are coming here and buying up all the real estate, right? And you've got folks who are aging in place who they don't need to sell because they know that when they do sell, they're good, man. They can sell pretty quickly, whether they use a realtor or an iBuyer or not. It's where are they going to go on the other end, right? You need to shift to a lead curation methodology. How do I get somebody who I meet at an open house on Saturday to trust me enough so that when they are ready, they use me? But I squeeze every single person out of you that is. That's my wife's, uh, that's my wife's battle strategy for everything. Because Chicago, you think it's bad here? Chicago is horrible. Regular people can't buy houses. I mean, she's, she's in a market where, uh, you know, Lincoln Park, you're talking almost a million dollars for a nice two-bedroom, three-bedroom condo. You want to buy your first single-family home where you're buying your own roof, your own siding, your own hot water tank and all that other stuff, you're spending a million dollars easily, easily. And normal people can't afford that stuff because 
It's not, a, it's not just about the home, it's about the inventory and taxes. Taxes have tripled in the city of Chicago. Every single one of my wife's sellers are leaving. So what she's doing right now, when it comes to her methodology, she's actually now going, she's speaking now, but going to actual markets where her clients are going to. And she's trying to meet agents in Northern Florida, Alabama, Texas, where it's cheap to live so that she can create a partnership with like-minded agents on the, on the landing end of things and give her sellers, give her sellers some confidence and an exit strategy. Right? But that you need to curate leads for that. Curating. Right? We'll talk about all that stuff today. Okay? The concepts is what we really are going to get behind. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, we may talk about brands here, and what I want you to do is embrace the concepts behind what is really driving these things. Okay? And not the concepts about you, because you are not the end user. You are a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, right? So there's going to be inherent limitations and differences in how you're going to use technology, marketing, and all that other stuff. But when it comes to the concepts on why your clients use things, why your customers use things, you need, you need, to, you need to key off of that right now. So case in point, it's less about Twitter and more about the fact that you need to consistently hit people in 200 characters or less, really good, high-quality information consistently over an extended period of time. That's how you build an audience. Instagram will tell you that you need to be visual in the way you communicate. And you need to be visual on a two inch screen. Video is about how, why. How do I do things? Why do I do things? Why do I want to move into this home? What, what I am interested in and when it comes to Denver, this is a sprawling city. How many different markets are there? There's downtown, there's Rhino, right? It's called Rhino, it's where the hipsters, skinny pants hipsters go, right? Uh, you got the suburb, this is the first time I've been to this part of Denver. What do, what do you all call this? What is this neighborhood? What is this area called? It's not, it's not like, it's not the Denver Metro, is it? Yeah, you need to make, make, make it make sense to people like me who are looking to move here, okay? Because the more you can ease that kind of friction, the better. What are you good at? It's not really about, it's not really about ta talking about how awesome you are. It's letting your clients do it. It's the best part of social media is letting your clients do all the talking for you, which is right, reviews, recommendations. That's your bottom line for social media. You need to be out there and having your customers talk about your brand day in and day out, right? We're gonna talk about concepts more than anything throughout the, the next couple hours, okay? What this isn't about is demographics. I hate the demographic conversation. We've been talking about, we've been talking about millennials since they were like young, when they were actual millennials. You know what happened to millennials? They got old, started having kids, right? And then it was like, what well, the difference between uh, millennials and their grandparents, the baby boomers? You know what, right now, you need to be marketing the hell out to baby boomers, period. Baby boomers need to be told, hey, you know what? Wherever you want to go, I can provide you that exit strategy. But baby boomers at the same time, they act like, the, like this kid. They act like these folks. You have two types of clients, guys, and that's it. Connected, disconnected. That's it. That is it. I have met more curmudgeon 20-year-olds who have stopped using social media because they did something to get fired from a job, whereas I've met grandparents who are pretty dang savvy because they're using social media to keep up with their grandkids, right? You have two types of clients and that's it. And it's really kind of powered by the, what kind of phone they use. That's the number one question, by the way, you asked at your, at your client orientation. What kind of phone do you use? Because if it's a 20 year old held, using a phone held together by duct tape, I think you're gonna be okay, right? But I myself had a client, I had a client, uh, one, of, one of my most memorable clients. He was, he was the perfect client. He was a surgeon up in Duluth, Minnesota, trying to buy a second home near to his grandkids. Anybody ever had a client that was like, I trust you. I don't need any emails. I don't need any of that stuff. We're gonna be in town every other Saturday for the next six months between noon and 4 p.m. Just show us what houses you think are a good fit. I love that guy. He was a surgeon. The guy had nothing else to do other than, he was like literally pick people's brains apart. He was that good, right? 
But then he retired. You know what he got for a retirement gift? An iPhone. And inside a day, when he got that phone, he sent me an email saying, hey, why aren't you showing me these listings that are showing up on this app? Because he got that iPhone as a retirement gift because they knew that he's going to have plenty of time to keep up with his grandkids. And they all, all of his coworkers found out that he was buying a second home and told him what apps to download, what websites to go to. That guy, inside of a weekend, became a totally different client. I had to sit down with him the next Saturday and say, hey, we need to grab some coffee, most likely a beer, and talk about your new ideology when it comes to houses, right? These people are exactly alike, right? These folks will never use a laptop computer or a desktop computer just like this kid will never, never, okay? My parents have a laptop and, or have an iPad for the airplane. They have an iPad for the living room. You know, they each have iPhones. This kid is on his third one. This kid is going to graduate with record amounts of student loan debt. So these, any of these people will need, to be, will need to be curated. But my parents, you know what they needed? Because they had time and they had money. But this kid didn't. They needed information about what's mattered to, what mattered to them now. They had three houses, Alaska, Hawaii, and Reno, Nevada. Okay, Reno, Nevada to hide money. They were selling off businesses and they wanted to be a, anyway, tax shelter, right? You know what parents needed? 1031 exchange. They asked me uh, last year, 1031 exchange, is that still a thing? I'm like, yeah, but you voted for the guy that might actually take it out. So you, you better sell your houses quickly because you have till the end of the year to get it done, right? So a year and a half of dreaming about consolidating two of the houses into, into one home in Vegas, a year of dreaming went to one week of action, guys. And what they needed was an expert in 1031 exchange in Vegas. What are you an expert in? This kid, my parents are gonna need it, right? Stop it with the demographic boxes. The only, people who, the only people who use demographic boxes, folks, are the ones that don't understand how other people work. And the backlash now is huge. Connected, disconnected, that's it. All you need to do is ask. Master the art of asking better questions. We're going to cover that as well. You need to start asking better questions of your potential clients starting from right now. Okay? So let's, let's kind of delve into it, right? Out of all the concepts that you all need to take to heart, these are the kind of the biggest ones that, 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 I, uh, that I really love talking about. For those of you guys who saw me at the Car Co Co Colorado Realtors Convention, I, I talked a lot about this stuff. But guys, what I can do on my phone now is absolutely amazing. It's amazing, right? Life is mobile. Everything about my life now is controlled through my phone. So how you convey your value, why I should trust you through a phone now is incredibly important. Incredibly important. You don't need to explain in 3,000 words anymore. It really is about the work that you've done, a picture that you took of the work that you did. Right? When it comes to the real estate industry in general, it's the story that you're going to tell through a mobile phone that's going to be huge. Like, seriously, stop saying things like, you sold a house in 24 hours. Can you stop saying that? Because what you're saying to me is that, oh, well, I can sell my house in 24 hours too, right? What kind of work does it take to get a house ready to sell in 24 hours? Somebody tell me. A lot. Yeah, right? Cost, it takes my wife almost 50 hours to get a home ready to sell. That's what you need to start tracking. Share that story through a, three inch, through a two inch screen, right? But what I can do through, through my phone is absolutely amazing. How many of you guys are, uh, use Amazon on your phone? It's amazing, right? I can buy stuff on my phone. I, I saw a commercial to, to, uh, this morning before I got here. People can buy cars with an app on their phone. Have you ever test driven a car? You can't do that on a phone, can you? Right? But the fact that I can look for a car, figure out what car I'm going to buy, and then click on the ones, or one or two, that, I, that will get delivered to my door, that's the stuff we're talking about here. What I can do on my phone is amazing. Marketing, guys, useful. I need to have that aha moment in your marketing. 
I don't need any pictures of you from 1995 anymore, okay? I don't need you, pictures of you posing with your dog and a phone to your ear. I don't need that anymore, right? Share your aha moments. If your website gives me those aha moments, share with me your website and the reasons why I want to go, go to it. But I need to, be, I need to be able to learn from your marketing. And if you don't know, by the way, ask. Your A-list client should be able to tell you everything you need to know, how, marketing is, how your marketing is. Right? Is what you're seeing on my marketing indicative of my service to you? No? Fix it. Okay? Use your A-list clients, by the way, to keep, keep all of the real estate marketing that they get throughout the year. And around this time of year, have, have these A-list clients come and share with you what it is that was great marketing to them. Because really, at the end of the day, all that matters is what they like, what your clients understand, right? And what they're seeing. But if I can learn from your marketing, we're good. Brands have become much more human. This is what I'm telling you guys. Stop talking like realtors. Stop marketing to other realtors. Um, technology companies are getting way, way more human. Way more human. The marketing that they do is absolutely amazing, right? Um, whereas we try to compete against tech. We're going to lose. Technology already won. Our job now is to get people in the real world where technology has no place, okay? But humanize your brand. Talk like a human being when it comes to your, when it comes to your marketing and what you guys uh, convey through, through a twin screen. Experience and wisdom actually matters. Um, new agent, right? It's not like riding a bike. Hustling is something you need to go out there and do. Go see houses. There's, there's a big difference in seeing them online, seeing them in the real world. How many, like, every, every one of these agents will tell you, you've seen horrible pictures on the MLS of homes, haven't you? But you see that home in the real world, this is kind of nice. And you're like, you don't want to share it with the, with, the rest of your, with the rest of your other agents out there, right? The real world's a very different place, right? That, that type of expertise matters. The experience, though, folks, um, experience is not only the amount of homes that you sold or how long you've been, you've been doing this real estate thing, but how, what, you, what you promise my experience is going to be with you. Is it going to be smooth? Is it going to be friction-free? Is it going to be hassle-free as much as you can? Have you told me that I'm the, I'm the one? You all got to understand, I am the problem when it comes to the real estate transaction. I just don't know it yet. My wife says it perfectly. My wife says it perfectly. She goes to somebody and says, I'm going to sell 100 houses this year. You're going to do it once. What professional do you want to hire? Right? When you're talking about experience, it's not just about the years, the amount of homes that you've sold. At the end of the day, really no one cares. How much wisdom you bring to the occasion. Data, I've got all the data. I have access to all the data you guys have. All of it. In my head. In my head. I need wisdom from you. I need wisdom. I need knowledge. I don't need the same garbage given to me that I can get almost anywhere else. What does 20%, what does 13% of appreciation actually mean? What does equity mean? These are the things we need to start talking about. The journey is long and the journey is offline. We now have stats that actually say people start looking at real estate now. They're, they're looking at next year's real estate transactions now. When it snows like this, I, I, when, I was in, when I was in Minnesota, first snow, it's going to be a suck weekend. <laughs> because all everyone wants to do is prepare for the winter now. Because winter hits you like a brick, right? But when it comes to the, the, the journey, man, it's uneven. It's going to be longer. We need to start thinking about what you're doing right now to attract next year's clients, period. End of story, okay? But I would suggest you put yourself out of business. Think about what the world looks like without you to figure out how you can find a place within it. This is a really good example of that. That dude just holoported into that other dude's living room from another country in Europe. Okay?
This technology, guys, is baked into every Xbox and PlayStation your kid plays with. This technology is baked into your $1,000 cell phones. Okay? What's the showing going to be for your kids? What's the showing going to be? I actually think that's not a bad thing, frankly, right? If I can, if I can take some looky-loos out of the equation, I'm good. Like virtually tour a home over here. You can already do it. But what I want is a real world. They want to smell the cat pee client. You know what I mean? That's what you want, right? So short term, you need to think, well, long term, you need to think about a showing. Do I need you for that? Short term, we're an industry, guys. I'm looking at you, new agents in the room. Um, when your portfolio of work actually matters, guys, we're an industry that can't even take professional pictures of our listings. And we have kids doing this. They're hoverboarding to their buddies' living rooms to play video games, right? Our kids' new normals, man. This stuff, how are you gonna get people in the real world? You can't smell cat pee. That literally is marketing now. You can't smell cat pee in the real world, not yet, right? With this stuff though, man, you need to prepare for it now because you can already do half of this. You know, you, you look like an idiot with the headphones, right? But that's all changing. Apple's, uh, Apple supposedly is going to be releasing a set of virtual reality glasses within the next couple of months, okay? But I'm not even concerned about that. It's the fact that cars follow suit, websites follow suit. I mean, I can go and virtually look. I can, what I can do in my car, my rental car right now is absolutely amazing, okay? What, what do I need you for? Yeah, showings, it's not, it's not seeing 30 houses this weekend, it's seeing two of the right ones. Waste your time over here. Narrow it down, but let's go see the ones that, that fit. That fit what it is that you want and what you need. And frankly, tell me, how many of you guys ever had a buyer that said they wanted one thing and bought something completely different? Right? That's huge, right? You walk into that home where somebody, like, it doesn't even fit their thing, but they grew up in a house like that, it's sold, 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 right? How people feel is something we need to start keying in on. So put yourself out of business starting right now. How you do that is really simple, okay? We need to start being more like the true change agents that are out there. We need to be like them, and it's these companies, these companies. And you need to start, again, taking concepts from what these guys are offering and put it into your business starting right now. Google, the number one real estate search website in the world. Google this. There are more real estate searches happening in Google than any other website put together. Other websites happen to be there when I search for XYZ Main Street, right? At the very least, own you. When I Google you is what I'm seeing indicative of your service to me. If you don't know, ask. Client appreciation event that you should have by the end of the year Bring 20 of your A-list clients out and have them become part of your marketing. Google me. Is what you're seeing indicative of me? If not, start changing it, right? Apple, premium service, premium product, $1,000 cell phone. Do you exude premium service? I actually kind of love these iBuyer guys. You know why? They're trying to figure out who it is that doesn't want to use you. That's pretty cool, frankly, when you think about it. Two, they are proving that people will pay a premium amount of dollars to use real estate services. That isn't you, at least right now. You all know that? I, I'm not gonna take the, the average dollar amount because we have a lawsuit going on with that, right? But triple, guys, all in, that's what these folks are being charged not to use a realtor, triple up to 18% what I've seen all in of that sales price, including the administrative fee and all the other fees to fix a home, okay? So they're figuring that out. What are you doing to exude premium service? Because whether I'm buying a $50,000 home, a $500,000 home, a $5 million home, I need to feel that. Premium service starting right now. Be more trustworthy than Facebook and Uber. That's a low bar to step over. Super, super, super low, right? We're, we're in industry, we'll do an open house this weekend. Like the, the trick to be able to get people to wanna give you their real name and number and email address is a, is a thing, isn't it? Because those same people will have no problems using an app 
with my with my credit card number baked into it, with one button, some stranger will come pick me up, take me to the airport, or to a bar. Some stranger. The bar is super low, right? Be more trustworthy than these guys. Zappos is powered by service. What are you powered by? And it, Zappos is now renowned for that, isn't it? I mean, anybody here ever use Zappos here? I mean, I could. I I call Zappos and they pick up the phone which is the number one complaint in real estate right now. People aren't picking up their phones, okay? And I can buy anything and return it in three days, no matter what, right? What are you powered by? What's your brand promise? You need to figure that out. What is your brand promise, right? Amazon, I can buy everything from A to Z. That's what that logo means, you see that? That's not a smile, that's a thing, A to Z. Why do you use Amazon here? Who's an Amazon Prime member? We all are. We are all a product, aren't we? Why do you use Amazon here? Who uses Amazon? Easy, convenience, quick, right? Saves me time, saves me money in my head, right? It's ubiquitous. I, I, I think it's troubling when our kids are going to grow up Googling Amazon, they'll see an ugly website instead of a river. It's troubling, right? What's that? Yeah, right? They upsell me. I have a, a three-year-old, they successfully upsell me, right? Oh, my kid would love this. They're right, my kid would love this, right? Yeah, so like when it comes to Amazon, right? You need to be the Amazon of real estate. Amazon's in our, in our business, y'all know that? They're in our business. So Amazon, be everything that they are. I no longer hire you just for you. I hire you for the rest of your team. The rest of your team is mortgage guy, title dude, buyer's agent, seller's agent, right? All the lawyers that you have, basically everyone in your Rolodex that makes the, uh, the transaction go, that's now part of your marketing. Amazon, everything made to Z, right? Everything. I mean, look at Airbnb too. I look at Airbnb, I have friends who, uh, who come out here for Broncos games from Alaska. And they don't go to hotels because hotels are extremely expensive around, those, around Bronco Stadium, right? What do they do? Airbnb. That's a lot of people's first foray into real estate now. You all know that? And it's pretty. Looks good. Tells me a lot of contextual information. You want to think about your next web presence? That's probably going to be it. It's inevitable they get into real estate. What is Airbnb? The single largest database of investment properties in the world. It's inevitable they get into real estate because they're getting their hands slapped everywhere they go throughout this country. All right? But there's a lot of money to be made in transacting 1031 exchange style investment property switches, right? If you're an expert at that, maybe you should start exuding it, okay? But these guys, man, I engage with these guys more than anything else, right? Because as, as technology starts to, to, to have a, a friction-free space, we need to start meeting that demand, right? How do you reduce friction? How do you reduce friction? And it's not, for, you know, buyer or seller. It's for me, specific to me. We need to start thinking about things like this because technology is an amazing place. This is a perfect example of it. Any of you guys have an Android phone here? Android phone? You know, you can buy a pair of earbuds. They're cheaper than this now. I think they're about $130, okay? That in real time, in real time, translates a dozen languages into English into your ear in real time. It's freaky, no, that's freaky, right? But you're seeing people run with things like this. I have a friend in Atlanta. Um, Atlanta's become kind of like what Denver is, a very a melting pot of, of buyers and sellers. Uh, a buddy of mine might, be, might have a Korean client one day, a Russian client the next, and a move up buyer uh, moving into the city from, uh, from, from the burbs, and a native Atlantean in the, in the same day. But what he does is he takes these, he, he and his, uh, his team, his mortgage people, title people, all those folks, they, they team up, they buy a dozen of these phones, they buy one a month for use, along with these earbuds, and they market it to international buyers and sellers who are looking to invest in the Atlanta real estate market. Commit to us, and we'll get you this phone with these, eye, with these earbuds, right, that make the transaction go. It's got DocuSign, it's got all the portals on it, it's got all the, it's really good forward thinking about using tech for that. 
That's removing friction, right? But what these guys are doing are keying off of that. So again, we talk about, right, humanized, uh, humanized marketing and branding, useful marketing and branding. Get an offer in a minute, sell it anytime you want. That, that should tell you about how real estate marketing needs to go. Sell your home to open door and skip the hassle of showings, repairs, and months of uncertainty. That's the real estate transit. That's, that's what we do. We are masters of that. This is what they're keying off of. The hassle's not you. The hassle is your clients. I, I got it. I sold a house this year. Sold one to buy the next one. I'll tell you what, getting that phone call at 9 a.m. for a 5 p.m. showing is fantastic because I spent all day, all day cleaning. But then 5.45 comes rolling around. Your buyers haven't been there yet. How long are you guys in houses when your clients hate it? Minutes? Right? That's irritating to me. That's the hassle they, that they keep talking about. Right? People are willing to pay a lot of money to not deal with that. Because that, when you talk to most sellers, is the horror stories that they talk about. Somebody took a poop in my, we hear it at NAR. Somebody took a poop and didn't flush the toilet. We hear things like this. They left all the doors unlocked. My house got robbed right after we did an open house. These are the things that we hear. That's the hassle. And it is a hassle, it is. So when you guys start talking about like how you sell a home with your next listing, what are you gonna promise? Because I'm, I'm, my wife, for one, has been hearing a lot of, are you gonna make sure that the buyers are pre-approved? Are you gonna make sure that they're gonna come with their, with their um, agent? You know, that's the other bigger problem. People aren't answering their phones. Too many agents are giving away lockbox codes to their buyers. Did you hear about the worst one that happened? You all hear the professional development forum at the Colorado Realtors? Did you hear the worst one, the worst story that they heard? No showings after two, a seller wanted. No showings after two. It was a cop. And some lady and her mother-in-law came walking into a house at 3 p.m. because the agent gave the buyer the lockbox code. The guy was distraught because he could have shot him. This is the reason why folks hate us. This is the reason why our, our, we need to start anding it up, man. This is what we're competing against. Competence, certainty, right? How you, how you talk about right now to your next seller, how, what, how, what, how you share what you're gonna do to remove that friction now is going to be key, right? This is turnkey, this is Realogy's, um, Realogy and, uh, and Amazon's partnership. It's, got, it's no difference between, between this and um, USAA. Anybody ever dealt with a USAA client? Same thing, it's the same thing, right? But instead of you giving up half of your commission back to the, back to the client, what the client gets is $5,000 worth of smart home tech and, uh, and Amazon home services credits. Literally, you can buy somebody an Amazon tech at Target, if that's a big deal to your clients. But the rest of you guys, how many of you guys have really good general contractors, plumbers, electricians ready to go? You all do, don't you? Share that information. My wife actually does this now. Part of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, post-closing experience, you get three hours with my handyman. And he comes in for three hours and, and goes around the room, follows you around your new home and patches the walls, puts together your Ikea furniture, all that other stuff. It's amazing, right? We can do this right now. But guys, in order to be a turnkey agent for Amazon, you need to be professional. Answer your phone. Drop everything with his clients because they're relocation clients, most of them, right? And give really good service in a short period of time. What does, again, brand promise mean to you? So wait, this is us, man. This is no joke. Stop worrying about the portals. At some point, this is not going to be exclusive to Realogy. It's a guarantee, if it works. Well, you sign up. But I would say is start offering it regardless as part of your buy-sell transaction experience. What you do now is a thing. This is our new consumer ad campaign that I, that for the first time I love sharing. Check it out. Listen to this story. Can't get it. I don't, I can't do anything about it. Here, I'll do this. 
that's who we are. There was no option to send the, the audio through the um, HDMI. So, yeah, there's no option for it. It's, it's irrelevant. I just want you to listen to the, to, to that, uh, to the story behind that. What do realtors do, right? Realtors are beyond, go beyond homes. They fight for communities. They Basically, if you're in leadership, you're doing awesome things, right? If you're in leadership in your community, it's even better. Because what you have are, are these companies now starting to take up that call to action. Check this out. Seems like your average real estate agent, right? But did you know Pam is in the top 1% of agents in your area on homelight.com? Pam sold your neighbor's house and has every five-star contract ran 10 miles on speed dial. Pam grew up a block away and sits on your city council. Pam has sold five times more homes than the best agent you know, and she sold them twice as fast. Pam is a super agent. Find your super agent right now on homelight.com. Basically the same message, right? You'll hear that. Realtors are, go beyond homes, right? They sell a lot of stuff, but they're also involved with their community. They've got, they know all the local contractors. Homelight is a brokerage, all 50 states. Homelight is a brokerage that's a startup technology company. It is 90% funded by Google. Google now is, a bro is running a brokerage in this industry. Here's the thing though, right? I love that message though, because what a lot of folks are realizing is that at the end of the day, we are selling a real world object to other human beings. And each one of those experiences are very different. And what these guys are trying to figure out is how to connect strangers together. That's awesome. Because that tells me everything I need to know about where we live in this space. The people need us. And now you're having technology companies start to shine that light for a 35% referral fee, of course, right? So start acting on this stuff right now. Start thinking about what you're going to be doing right now to attract business. This has gone beyond the portal. Stop worrying about Zillow and, and all the other guys that are out there. This is, this is big. Okay? Sign up. It's free, by the way. Just sign up. Just see what they do. Right? Yeah, because they're, sending, they're, they're doing a really good job of uh, sending it to, to folks that are kind of already bought, their, bought into their system early on. Okay? What I love about this stuff is that this is it. Guys, see this? Amazon spent years destroying bookstores, but now they're building bookstores. I love it. I love it, right? I mean, have you, has anybody ever been to one? Do they have them here? Amazon Go store probably, right? It's weird, right? It's like one big like uh, trust thing. I trust you to not to walk out with the stuff that, you're, that you just bought. Here's the thing, though, right? It's, it's a really good connection to the offline world. Online to offline, back again, it's, it's seamless, right? What Amazon realized pretty quickly is that it's really hard to read a, a, a Kindle book to a three-year-old. Really, really hard, right? It, it's, it's, it's cold. It doesn't work. Books are still a thing. You know, I can go to uh, the Amazon store and buy the book for a 10% discount for being an Amazon Prime member. Or if I wanted to, scan it with my phone and it'll get delivered to my house for whatever reason in three, in three hours, okay? But man, is it a seamless experience, online to offline. That is one of the things we need to start working on. I see online things that are very different than what you guys are offering in the real world, very different, right? Bridge that gap, starting right now. 90% of people started the real estate search, buy or sell online. 80% of those people then call an agent or visit the home in the real world. It compels them to action. Same experience, okay? We're gonna talk a lot about that when it comes to uh, marketing in a bit, okay? Real estate changing, real estate's changing because our buyers are changing, guys. So the long term now is huge. Stop thinking so transactionally. This, is a, this piece of paper, by the way, is one of the few that my wife prints out. It's awesome, it works really well. Print it out. This is the real estate transaction. Right around here is when you say, oh, hey, multiple offer situation. How many of you guys been in a multiple offer situation? How many of you guys had a buyer that was like, cool, four other offers. I could still lowball, right? They're gonna come back to us, we're good, right? That's when you say like, this is when, like, this is when you say things like that, when you're crying in the back of my car for the third time. This is right here when you say things like, oh, wait a minute, this house looks nothing like it did online. How many of you guys ever had a client that said that, right? How many of you guys ever had a client that said, wait a minute, I had no idea that this whole mortgage thing was really important. That's this right here, right? 
this is this is the transaction, right? And while I get like the, you need to convey this to your to your uh, clients at the dining room table, how you need to start acting is this. This is this is the point where I'm looking at the house. So I'm looking online. I'm studying up and researching how to buy and sell a home, and everything is awesome. Everything is great. I don't need to get offline. I don't need to get in the real world, right? Median time of home ownership. That, that line now is up to nine years. Buyer seller profile, guys. Uh, out of all the sets they're sharing, the ones that, that one, uh, the two that are most compelling to me, this is the first one. People are staying in their homes longer. You're, you're experiencing it, right? In nine years, I'm, I'm, I'm rethinking what trust and value is, right? Nine years. Buyers are getting older on, this, on the buy side. 46 is their average age right now. Wow, right? 32 is average for the first time home buyer. 32. They're not, they're not getting out of college, getting their first job, saving for a couple years, and buying their first home in the mid-20s. They are paying off student loan debt. They're paying off credit card debt, and now they're and they're 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 saving as much as they can in order to, in order to buy their first home. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's hard to know about the technology industry, but instant millionaires. I I, I uh, personally, because I've dealt with both. You ever dealt with a doctor? like a new doctor, now they're making a ton of money, but they're still paying off debt, right? And what they've done, because they, they, they had you for their job, especially in the technology industry, you go to San Francisco now, you're paying five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 a month on a studio apartment, if you can even find one. So even the rate of saving still is not great, right? And it's, it's relative, which is why you're seeing, you know where the technology industry is pushing people? Denver, they're pushing them out here. You're, that's why you have a hub, like you've got a nerd hub just north of here. Yeah, you've seen it? I saw them on Google Maps. Who are they? Do you know who they are? But seriously, they're here. You should be picking their brains right now about saving for homes. And the, the ironic thing about it is that almost all of these guys still qualify for first time home buyer or savings programs, right? But it's all relative. You get, that, you get that Silicon Valley kid who made it. And this is why, again, you cannot put demographics on top of these things because I've met, I, my, 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 wife, my wife has clients who work for Google and all these companies, but they, they got out of college, they lived frugally, they, they weren't spending $5,000, $10,000 on rent as a status symbol. They were, they were renting their hovel. <laughs> you know what I mean? They didn't have a car. They were saving at a greater rate, and they and they have a ton of money now. These people are everywhere. What they don't have is inventory, because what uh, definitely these folks are doing, they're not buying that first condo. Remember, I got into real estate when I was a kid, right? People were buying condos and townhouses before they bought their single family home, and then their move up home, and then their forever home. Now they're saving on money and going, screw it, I'm just going to save another ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and buy that five bedroom house that I'm going to pop out kids in. Which is why you're seeing builders react to that. Right? So it is, is the tail wagging the dog? I don't know. But what you guys have here is at least are more opportunities for people. Okay? Yeah, but either way, they're getting older and they're getting steadily older. So it really is at the end of the day how, you, again, you attract people in their mid 20s, 30s for 10 plus years when it comes to what they're doing. These are the stats. This is NAR, Forrester, and Google research stats, guys. 50% of people started their home search six to 12 months in advance. Half of the people who were left started two years ago. So six months to two years, people started the real estate search to buy, based primarily on affordability. So my wife, again, Chicago, she has a two-year plan. She's a two-year plan. Unaffordable market, two-year plan. Here, it depends on really where they want to buy. But just in my research here, I'm seeing a disparity of housing. I mean, I, I, why do people want to buy an Aurora versus Rhino? Right? Skinny pants hipsters versus, versus kids, right? There's a lot of stuff that's out here. There's a lot of opportunity here. You just need to be an expert in something and share it, right? Two and three are researching you extensively before reaching out to you. 
two and three. That's after whittling it down from at least a dozen agents that, they, that everyone and their mother seems to know. It takes 10.7 points of information for people to make a decision nowadays. 10.7, to buy a pair of jeans, to buy a tomato, to buy a cucumber. The single largest financial transaction of my life, give me more. And you've got plenty of it in this town, right? So here's a good example for me as an agent, okay? Uh, I was an agent in Minnesota before coming here. Um, I'll say this, three post-internet markets, okay? When real estate search became a thing and I can look, at, look online for houses, it became ubiquitous, right, with the internet. I didn't even include that because it was so low on my top 10 list of where people went. Number one stop on my website when I was an agent in Minnesota, glossary of real estate terms. Glossary of real estate terms. Like what's a, what's a buyer's administrative commission? What is equity? And I would actually make it funny. Equity is blue sky. Because if your house goes on the market next to the house next door that's exactly the same, but your house smells like cat pee, the other house is gonna, is gonna gain more equity than yours because it's gonna sell first for more. Let's get rid of the cat pee first, right? I used to put a HUD. When, you know, remember when HUDs existed back in the day? I used to put a HUD. HUD was marketing. And I would, I would, I would go by line by line. Junk fee, junk fee, junk fee, state fee, state fee, state fee. I told people what agency was. I told people all these things that here's, a, here's what a contract looks like. It's 45 pages. I want you to be up to date with it before we meet. I also had the top 10, every month I did a top 10, um, top 10 list of, of what neighborhoods was, were selling and why. And I did one spillover market, right? Because if you were priced out of Edina, which is where everyone wanted to live in, in, in Minnesota or Minneapolis, I talked about St. Louis Park. And then I also went into greater detail and said, I interviewed the principal of St. Louis Park Elementary School about why she loves her neighborhood. Every point of information I could give out there was huge. My wife, we'll talk about my wife in a second, the 30 steps to buy and sell a home is marketing. Her, 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 uh, her mortgage guy talking about the mortgage update of the day is marketing. Her lawyer, number one objection in Chicago is why am I using you when I'm paying a lawyer $500 to do what you can do? The lawyer gets up there and talks about what the lawyer does. Anything you can do that's beyond real estate search, more information, more information, the better it is. Now, here's the thing. People may not read it, but you know who it is? You know who is reading it? Google. So when you go to my wife's, uh, you go to Chicago and you Google, how do I buy a home in Chicago? My wife's website comes up first. You Google my wife's lawyer. My wife's website comes up first. You Google my wife's home inspector. My wife's website comes up first, right? So Google reads the hell out of this stuff, loves it. That's why it's huge. Also, when I was in Minnesota, I had a website called IAintFromHereEither.com because I wasn't from Minnesota. It was weird. Minnesota is one of those places no one leaves it. They grow up there. I was competing against people who knew, who knew 10 realtors from birth. Okay, So I ended up wanting to attract folks who weren't from Minnesota. Right? IAintFromHereEither.com, and it was all a bunch of, uh, of steps to move to the city. The difference between Minneapolis and St. Paul, because there was a lot of mis-, mis uh, miscommunication on that stuff. Um, and I attracted 3M, Target, Best Buy, Minnesota Twins, and Minnesota Vikings. That's me in a new market. I wasn't from there. So re rest easy knowing. Share any kind of expertise and you're good, okay? Can I afford it? How's the market? Those are, the top, those are uh, parts of the 10.7. Can I afford it? How's the market? Why is this estimate inaccurate? Put that out there. Cybercrime. Why is this estimate inaccurate? Do you guys know why? Actually, it's not accurate, inaccurate anymore. It's becoming more accurate daily. So you can't say it's inaccurate, right? Um, everything online is an ad. Every time you go on there and you rip up your carpet thinking your estimate went up, Bank of America just got dinged two pennies, becomes 180 million. And that's how these companies make money. Nothing online is meant for you. Everything online is meant to keep you there. That was my, that was my uh, definition of this estimate. Okay. 
this stuff, guys. This is the long haul. So I meet you. What are you going to do to keep me wanting to love on you for two years? Give me all of my friends and family for two years. You plan on this strategy, you're fine. Okay? You're going to be fine. Robocalling tech. You want to buy some leads. I get a lot of questions about this during this time frame, right? Um, stop it. Man, we are a weird industry. We, we send out robocalls but hate getting robocalls. You know, the thing that you need to worry about the most now is if you go to an open house, you host an open house this weekend, if I have a new phone, it's now blocking your phone number. I turn that on on my phone. Anybody done that? Anybody have a new iPhone, an iPhone? You turned on the, the call blocking feature? I get no phone calls now. They go directly to voicemail. If I'm not, if you're not in my contact list, it goes directly, directly to voicemail. My phone is quiet now and it's amazing, right? But you're seeing the FTC crack down against these robocalling stuff, and, and now technology is starting to do it. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, if you, if, if, I, even if I hire you as an agent today, and I, and I haven't put your name, number, and email address, and phone number in my contact list on my phone, directly to the voicemail. Go ahead. How many people go into that great of detail? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So, you know, like, so here's a, your first like big like uh, uh, work hack. This weekend you're doing an open house. Make sure you add yourself as a contact in your phone. Add yourself as a contact in your phone, and then when you meet somebody who you made rapport with at an open house, bump your information over to them. You don't have a business card anymore. Your business cards are for your clients who love you. Give it to them. But when you meet somebody you get rapport with, hey, can I bump you my information? And you send it to them, and it gets automatically inputted into their contact list. All right? LinkedIn does that really well, too. LinkedIn does that. But man, this robocalling stuff, if you're using robocalling tech, Vulcan 7, um, any, uh, Red X, any of these companies that do that, they, they are reeling trying to figure out how they're going to how, how they're going to make this work. I love it. Love it. Okay. Um, when it comes to how you buy leads though, I, I don't care. If you buy them, that's fantastic. What you're still going to need is really good marketing, really good technology and processes in order to to uh, kill it with a lead curation strategy. You still need this stuff. Okay. Now, once you go beyond that whole like three years for me to go and talk to you, these stats guys are from Google. These are the next set of stats that we need to start figuring out. Nine billion real estate searches were done last year. Nine billion, think about that for a second. Six million homes will sell this year. About six million sold last year. About six million sold the year before that. Nine billion people are dreaming right now online. That, by the way, that's why you're getting crappy leads, okay? By the time somebody sat down with you, they've done 10 different searches on 10 different websites, all of it through a mobile device. Right, But these things right here, half of all people that Google talked to, roughly 120,000 people, hated our websites. They hated the fact they couldn't customize it. They hated the fact that they could smell commission breath on it. They hated it. So our online presence needs to be fixed more than uh, from the get-go. And 41% of people, four in 10, still had no idea which agent they wanted to use after nine billion real estate searches. Guys. Right, which is why they go and they they go through Zillow, they go through all these other companies. Okay, so after you get to the length of time before they reach out, this is what happens right before they reach out to you, and this stuff, guys, we need to start thinking about fixing. Right, so before the transaction, right, because we'll talk about useful website, differentiated rep rep reputation, curated needs and solutions, customer questionnaire, streamlined CRM. This is, the, this is the top stuff you need to start thinking about your tech right now, whether or not you buy or buy leads or not, okay? Usefulness, why do I want to use you? Why should I go back to your presence online, right? How are you going to ask really good questions of me? Think about that. It doesn't need to be an actual questionnaire, just an email, right? Or in a CRM for, me to, uh, for you to dump my name and number into, okay? Being memorable with your marketing, this is huge, right? You need to think about how you're going to be memorable 
more than my little Asian baby. He's adorable. Here, here you go. Here you go, Crystal. All right? He's, anybody needs him? Just let me know. He's very expensive, but he's a close. He's my wife's closer. I'm serious when I say that. Uh, second showing. If she has a trouble troubling client, anybody have a client that's like need to see like five houses for the second time, right? She'll bring him, especially if it's a vacant home, and he'll go play in the house. He knows this. He's like, Mom, do I need to be closer now? Oh, you need to be closer. He goes and runs in, runs around the house, and he plays and frolics. People visualize themselves with their kid. It's amazing. Give it a shot if you have kids or grandkids, right? But when it comes to marketing, right? When it comes to marketing, you're it's like, you need to be more memorable than this puppy playing with a doorstop. This is literally like your, your, like, this is the stuff, like the world is burning down around us, but this freaking puppy playing with a doorstop is going to get 8 million views, okay? 8 million views when it comes to real estate marketing, right? I know. So this like your second takeaway, video. Uh, I'm sick of like video being video a thing. It, like if you haven't figured it out, don't worry about it. It's the quality of the video that you're going to need more than anything because I can watch this for two minutes and then watch it over and over again, can I? Right? I know. Look at that. Right? Second, right? 90% of video is viewed on mute. Can I see what this puppy is doing without hearing him play it? All right? So this stuff. Yeah, visually, Asian baby, he's adorable. Asian babies and puppies run the internet, right? So that's, that's what we'll have to, have to think about standing out from, from the get-go. This is what consumers are seeing. This is the reason why they wanted me to come and talk to you guys about this, but I didn't want to spend three hours talking about it. This, these are active transactions, guys. Don't ever go into, into a Facebook group and start talking about a transaction. I see this stuff. And chances are, if you're on the other side of somebody like me, you know what I've done? Is I've Googled the hell out of you, and then I'm going to go to the same groups you are. And if you're doing this, I'm just taking screenshots, man. What if the seller gets a better offer during attorney review? Do buyers often ask for closing costs? And if so, how do you know for how much to ask for? Call your lender, call your broker. I mean, the amount of things, if, the amount of things that we, we shoot ourselves in the foot for are amazing. Go ahead. No, it's, it's in a Facebook group, okay? So this is a closed group. These I took screenshots of. There's about uh, 100,000 agents in, these, in this group where I took these screenshots off of, and it is shocking. What sucks is that if I'm a client of yours in a lot of these groups, I can see these questions being asked. Oh, you know what? I have been, I have, so specifically with Facebook groups, okay? I have been invited into a group. I'm not even in the damn thing, but I've just been invited into it. For 10 days, I can see everything that's happening inside of it. If you have nothing nice to say about the transaction, shut up. If you're a broker in this room, know where your agents are going. If you're a new agent or any agent, if you're asking questions in a Facebook group instead of your broker, you should be fired. This is the biggest issue. But it's not online, just online that we're dealing with right now. It's things like this. This is an actual sign writer. This is a sign writer. Right? Sold as, for those of you guys who need to know uh, the Urban Dictionary for AF, that's sold as F word. Why? Millennials use that. I heard, I've heard that more times than not when I show this. Millennials say that. I'm like, millennials say a lot of things. Doesn't mean that we should. This sign, unedited, was taken by this Thomas Sturgill guy. See that guy? He put it in an East Natural Facebook group with 20,000 people. Get some class, he sold this house for a million dollars. So it's offline marketing. That's that's what we need to tighten this stuff up starting right now. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 I um, I I I know an agent who who saw a uh, who saw a a a 
So this, right? Imagine this, but a thousand words in a Facebook group. This new agent had no idea how to how to um, how to uh, how to how to negotiate or something like that, right? Had to deal with a difficult client. It was a whole bunch of things. I, there was enough information on the post where another agent in that in, in that same community all needed to do is look up the agent on the MLS and see which which uh, uh, home she was talking about, printed out screenshots, slid it underneath the door of the seller. Yeah. This is awful. The racist stuff, that's what Facebook is right now, frankly, okay? So let's not, let's not worry too much about that. There, it's professionalism, and I get this whole like freedom of speech thing, but there is, there is no protection from the consequences of the words that you use online, and there's no such thing as context either, okay? Uh, this is the reason why your kids aren't on this. You, you see a bunch of 20-year-olds doing stupid stuff? No, because they already made their mistakes. Uh, can you imagine being, I can't even imagine doing what I, what I did as a teenager nowadays because everything is online. <laughs> All of us are like, now these kids are, are, are live streaming it and they made mistakes, they're going to jail and now they're not on Facebook anymore, right? But it's, it's, it's almost always folks who should know better who are making these mistakes. Right, and the, the lack of professionalism now is huge online and off. This is this is this is the hurdle that we need to we need to go and jump over starting right now, because the rest of us we're too damn busy, aren't we? We're too damn busy to go out there and be awesome. We need to make some time. We need to make some time for it. Okay. So, more than anything, make sure your reputation is set. Now, if you do nothing else in social media online, make sure that you're nailing your reputation, right? So be everywhere, Yelp, biz.yelp.com, start an account there, your name at your brokerage, okay, biz.yelp.com. Um, make sure that you're there because it is easy for me, if you tick me off, to make an account for you to say how awful you were. I had a client do that. It's like, you should spend your time in a better way, is what I told her. Let's look for houses, right? We're good, right? The biz.yelp.com, um, Google business. Make sure you nail that. It's google.com slash business. If, you're, if you have a Google, anybody here have a Gmail account? Y'all should, right? What, you, once you have a Gmail account, you're in and you're golden, right? But google.com slash business. Claim, again, your, real, your offline or online spot in the real world, uh, from the real world, right? So people can love on you. LinkedIn is huge for this. LinkedIn is great. Especially for the, it's not just nerds, but it's really anybody else. Why? I Google you, your LinkedIn account is most likely the thing that's going to show up first. January 1st of every year, make sure it's up to date. And that's where you can talk about everything that you've done. But also, don't forget about sharing things like your community involvement, if you're a chair of a, of a charity, all that other stuff. I heard you talking about committee stuff, Bill, um, earlier. Don't be afraid to share that. You were the chair of the, it sounded like a political political advocacy committee. Candidate, Candidate that's amazing, right? Share that on your LinkedIn account. What, you can own your, your uh, reputation on companies like Real Satisfied. I love realsatisfied.com. Very simple. Allows me to, um, uh, after the transaction, send you an email. I'd love for you to share why it is that you chose me. You had a choice. You had a choice. Why'd you use me? Please share that information, and it gives you this nice, really nice little uh, thing here. You can share on your Facebook and all that other stuff. We have a company at uh, NAR now that uh, we've invested in called Rate My Agent, and Rate My Agent will now actually put a review next to the house you just sold. So if you're able to sell a home in two days, right, and then you could talk about the 35 hours it took for you to get a home ready for sale, Rate My Agent will allow you to do that. It will sync it directly with your MLS uh, if, you, if you let it. I think RA Colorado is talking to these guys right now. Um, but allow you to, to not only take your reputation, but be awesome with it next to the listing that you've done. But get out there. Do not be afraid that you have one client or five clients or zero clients. Don't be afraid of that. But you need to be there. Okay? Know how to handle a negative review. Know how to handle one. Okay? And just say, I'm sorry. Sorry I had a bad experience. Here is what I experienced with you. <laughs> 
Because what's happening a lot, because how many of you guys been in a multiple offer situation on the, on the seller side? You've represented a seller and you had multiple offers. There's been, there have been consumers going, I don't believe that, that my offer made it over to them. And I saw that the house sold for less than what I offered for it. You're seeing a lot of that stuff happen right now when consumers start to get in there, right? We all know, right, that sometimes houses sell for less for specific reasons. I had to deal with a relocation client. Cash deal versus a... Um, Cash deal versus a uh, finance deal. Relocation company took the cash deal. We'll take it 20 times a Sunday, right? Yeah, right? I mean, there's a lot of things out there that we need to protect ourselves from, but don't be afraid to get out there, even as a new agent, but also be prepared for anything negative. Frankly, you really need to pick, tick people off to get them to write you a negative review. Like really awful, okay? But be prepared for it anyways. This is your first, like, do nothing else that's cool. But make sure you have this ready to go. Ready to go. And as much as you can, own it. I like Real Satisfied, Rate My Agent, because you can own it. LinkedIn, uh, Google, uh, uh, Yelp. Um, I know somebody who, because he invested so much time in Yelp, he had to pay, he had to pay two or 3000 a month to activate all of his five-star reviews on Yelp, okay? So spread it around, spread the love. If you don't know, ask your clients. At the dining, dining room table, ask your clients, how'd you find out about me? Ask them, how'd you find out about me? Why are you using me? Where do you go for reviews? Write it all down. Better yet, send it in an email and ask them beforehand, okay? You guys wanna take a break before we get into the marketing end of things? All right, take a break, five minutes, come back in uh, five minutes. With realtor time, that's 10 minutes, so 20 till, okay? Uh, hello again. Yeah, this is good.
All right. You guys ready to go? Any questions uh, from any of that stuff beforehand? Got a lot of insurmountable, like what seems to be insurmountable things that are kind of bubbling up, but any questions on anything we talked about before? A lot of information, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so there are, uh, so the question for the YouTubers out there is, is there a one click to many uh, review sites? Um, Real Satisfied is the closest one to that. Real Satisfied, uh, once you post, goes not only to your, your account on Real Satisfied, but to Zillow, Realtor.com, and a couple of others. That's as close as they can get. In general, though, you're not going to see many, many of these review platforms talk to each other because they're all really competitors. So that's why I would ask. I would ask if you're uh, when you're do you, you're if you're anybody meeting a client this weekend or anything like that. So like, well, you're meeting with somebody today, right, Bill? <laughs> uh, what I would say is on on the Thursday before a Saturday email or Saturday meeting, send out a, a top five questions you need to know so that you could prepare for your client. And one of those is is where how did you find me? Where do you go for reviews, right? Or do you? A lot of people just Google you. Right, so go to where they go and spread it out. Uh, the uh, that's the number one question I get a, a, a lot for in terms of reputation management. Where do I go? So uh, to me, it's just be be everywhere so your clients can love on you where they go. Yeah, uh, set up a Google alert. By the way, you all know what a Google alerts are? Alert.google.com. Alerts.google.com. Set up Google alert for your name so that when somebody uses it anywhere online, it gets you get a nice little email about it. And do it for all your listings. If you're uh, for Peggy, you're a, an agent uh, manager kind of person. Do it for all your agents as well. So when you have an agent saying something or, being, or their name being used, you get a nice email instantaneously. It takes a couple of seconds for Google to index a page. Uh, Alerts.google.com. Alerts.google.com. Okay. Or just Google Google Alerts. I do it for my listings, I do it for me, I do it for my brand, I do it for NAR, a bunch of other places. Steve, Stu? Yeah. Yeah, so what is Airbnb? Airbnb is, is essentially investment property from all over the world going into one website. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. They, they, and if you look at it strictly from, strictly from the real estate point of view, I look at a home, and then I look at points of interest around the home. I see, I see people writing reviews on the home. I see contextual information that goes beyond three BR, two BA, charm and car. Right. On the other end of things, you know, you know, you don't know what Airbnb is going to do, but I look at what they are. And there's a lot of money to be made in facilitating transactions. Google's in it. Amazon's in it, right? So, but look at it from the strictly from the uh, from the real estate point of view, at least for now. Uh, I would go back if you're if you're thinking about if you're especially if you're a brokerage man. Airbnb is a really good website to look at to say, hey, this is kind of cool. Also, things like your uh, visitors bureau websites. You will see your visitors bureau websites are beautiful. I mentioned it at the Colorado Realtors convention, uh, uh, meetings a couple weeks ago. I mean, I look at like, I look at those websites being like really awesome real estate websites that don't have real estate on it. Can you imagine having play, visit, and stay on there? All right, it's amazing stuff. Think outside the box, man. Yeah, it comes to the stuff. And that's the, the marketing we're talking about, right? We talked about it a little bit already. Mark, uh, humanized messages that can tell people offline. I think this is the big one. What don't people know to Google? That's marketing now. What don't people know? It's a lot, isn't it? I mean, take the transaction out. It's it's how do how do showings work? How do inspectors? This is why I'm telling you, the glossary of real estate terms for me solved a lot of problems. 
solved a lot of problems. What don't I use to Google? What don't I, don't I know to Google, right? And your listings. Okay, I, granted, I was up in Beaver Creek uh, a couple of weeks ago. That's beautiful, right? But your normal kind of five bedroom suburban house that looks the same as all the other houses out here, I don't need it for that unless it's got something truly unique about it. Then share that, right? Share, if you're gonna share a listing, what is the thing that made the house a verb, right? What, what made the house a verb? But some marketing tips that are kind of simple and easy to kind of run with right now. Little things like this. The first thing you do when you go into a home, after you turn on the lights and unlock the doors, you gotta say things like, hey, hey Alexa, hi Siri. I'm serious, y'all do that? You should. Something's gonna answer back. I get these things for free, right? Because you need to give your buyer that, that little moment of like, holy crap, this is the world I'm in right now. I mean, we have these surveillance devices in our houses now without, without even blinking an eye. Talk about that. I, if you can pivot to everything kind of a consumer-centric approach to what you talk about, man, it's huge. Talk about things like social media. So this is the stuff we, I, I could talk about from the customer side of things. Your customers have no idea what they're not or not, they are or aren't saying on social media. When you're sitting with them at the, at the dining room table on Saturday, Google them, search for them, see what they're talking about. This is somebody that was doing a play-by-play -play of a real estate transaction. And agents like me are your worst nightmare. Sorry. I used to wait. I, I had, a, I had, a, I had a, a folder for every agent and client that I was up against because I wanted to step on necks, guys. All right? And what I would do is, We'd counter, and then I'd just watch your social media. I'd just watch it. So tell your people, radio silence during the transaction. Yeah. Yeah. If I can buy it at a Target, Walmart, or Apple store, you got to prepare for it. I have five Nest cameras in my home right now. I, I can look at my kid in every room that he's in right now, but then when you walk in, I'm cool with it. Do you ask your clients if they've got these things? You should. It's now, these are almost kind of like built in. I, these are built into houses now. Got to tell them that. Do you even know if it's illegal? Is it illegal in this state? Because in Massachusetts, for example, it is illegal to do that. Yeah. And sometimes your clients may not even say that. They may, not even, they may not even talk about it. Why? Because I want that competitive advantage. But what that does is for you as a buyer's agent, shut up, Mr. Client, right? Oh, without their, you just disconnect it? I would tell them that you're disconnecting it. <laughs> it is their stuff at the end of the day. And if you haven't had a good conversation about it, they might get ticked off at you. I will say, I had a friend of mine that got fired because during an open house, the, the, the uh, seller's agent, right? This is for you people who've got teams. This is why quality control is a thing. The seller listened to the whole open house didn't, and shared incorrect information. And they got fired that day. About things like HOA dues and all that other stuff. It's, it, I, that was the biggest cautionary tale I had. And it wasn't a Nest camera. You know what it was? It was Comcast. I, remember, I, 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 if I can buy it with my Xfinity cable package, you probably need to prepare for it. Go ahead. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've got to tell your clients, we don't talk until we, we don't talk until we get to the car. This is the stuff that like, most of your clients have no idea until they step on it, until they, until they get screwed over in a deal, right? This is your job now, right? Protect them from themselves more than anything. Google, talking about nerds, right? Um, when you depersonalize a house, start at the home office. That's the first place I used to go when I was a buyer's agent. Go to the home office because I see everything I need to know about the seller and I Google the hell out of you. 
right? Right, so depersonalize the home office. You don't need to depersonalize everything else, but the home office is huge. And if you, especially for a corporate client, make sure that if they're relocating out, that their PR department has pumped the brakes. Really good learn and learn, uh, lunch and learn, by the way. Uh, I, had a, I, had a, uh, I walked into a home um, with my client once and it was priced really low. Remember those days when homes were priced low and they still sat for a little bit, remember those days? Anyways, so I walked in and, and the first thing my clients were like, what's the matter with this house? It's perfect. Walked into the home office, Googled the uh, seller and his company and found out that he was moving in three weeks. I found out the promotion that he got and I found out where he was going. So we submitted our, I, I printed the, P, the PR notice out. I printed it out with the purchase agreement and said, no hard feelings. You guys need to close in three weeks, but we can close in two, but we ain't paying full price. Here you go, right? Submitted it and got my clients a hell of a deal. Hell of a deal. And then after the listing agent st started talking to me again, because we were friends, I, I destroyed her. Um, uh, we did a lunch and learn for the company. How do you get PR releases out for your relocating clients? When to do it? How do you partner up with your agent for it? And we both, we both, uh, both the listing agent and I were better for it, okay? We protect you from you. Things like this. Disconnect it. Do you even know how? <laughs> I, my, my, my home that I bought in, in Chicago, we bought it in, uh, we bought it in December. And for the month of January and February, we gutted the thing and made it look nice. But my contractor kept calling me saying, hey, um, your, your AC keeps kicking on. And you know what happens in, when it's 10 below and your AC keeps kicking on, right? Yeah. What happened was, was that um, uh, I didn't change the Wi-Fi on, uh, on my home when I, because I didn't think about it, me, right? Didn't, uh, didn't change the Wi-Fi. It was still talking to the, um, to, the, to the Nest. And the seller of the home that I bought it from kept trying to turn on the AC in her home on her app and didn't know why it wasn't turning on. Yeah. Right? Think that disconnect your smart home tech. Let's talk about this stuff, right? Because you, and as a buyer, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be wanting, you're like, if you're in leadership, stop making things look like a party. This looks like a party, doesn't it? This is the time of year agents who aren't in associations, they call this realtor prom time. Everybody's all dressed up. They're all doing their thing, right? This looks like realtor prom time. Talk about why it is. That on, on social media, it's perfect, by the way. Things like the pack, right? Time of year where you guys are out doing this stuff. Don't be afraid to talk about this stuff. Illinois realtors are not Republican or Democrat. We work for home ownership rights, property rights, things like that. Now's the time to step up. This is the stuff that only realtors can do. So when you're out there, like today, take for every one selfie you take, take 10 pictures talking about what it is that you're learning to be a better real, to, to be a better agent, right? Things like, you know what? Things online ain't the same as they are offline. This house, massive curb appeal until you actually see the house. <laughs> Held together by a duct tape and a prayer, right? Right? Get out in the real world starting right now. What is now marketing are all these aha moments, guys, that we need to start thinking about, okay? The commission. I love this Elon Musk tweet, right? The only time I'm gonna post a tweet. Talk about the commission. Don't be afraid to talk about your value. People are gonna realize at some point that you're underpaid and it's best to get them to feel that you're underpaid before they ask you about it. Talk about it. There's a big lawsuit brewing about this stuff right now, guys. Don't be afraid to stand up for the commission. It's weird, it is weird. It is weird, you get paid by the other side? That's weird, right? But my duty, duty is to you, I get, we get paid because we cooperate. We get paid because we cooperate. I get you to the table, the seller, the seller agent gets the seller to the table, we work together, that's how we're compensated. It's not about the price. Like get there, and you're gonna feel you're under you're underpaying me, right? Talk about that. Glossary of real estate terms. I'm telling you, works every time. Works every time, right? And if you don't know, you can ask. Uh, if you think Facebook is creepy, wait till you go to trends.google.com, and you can see 
just punch in Colorado real estate and you could see from anywhere where folks are Googling Colorado real estate. And if there's enough on that search term you're looking for, you can see down to the city, town, and county in which people are searching for things like Colorado real estate. It is super creepy, super creepy, okay? All right, Chicago, right? This is what real estate looks like there. It fluctuates dependent on seasons, guys. And then commercial real estate right now is the biggest inquiry outside of Colorado, or outside of Chicago real estate. It gets tracked, man. Super creepy. Right now, only, only, only people looking at color, uh, Chicago real estate are Chicagoans. But I've seen it from Iowa. I've seen it from Ohio. I've seen it from other places as well. Okay? Trends.google.com. Go ahead. Yeah. Like most cities, yeah. Not, not the cost of housing. The imp yeah, people are leaving. They're people, but people are leaving Chicago the same reason why people are leaving San Francisco. There's some, I'm spending ten dollars. I'm spending ten dollars on you know, a gal for a gallon of gas and a gallon of milk. Right? Chicago uh, real estate sales taxes uh, jump every three years. Right? Not every year like in Minnesota, like I'm used to, but every three years. So it's a massive jump, right? And people are leaving not only the city, but they're, they're going to the suburbs. They're not leaving the suburbs. They're leaving, the, they're leaving everywhere, right? So, yeah, ask, ask California how they feel. You know, the number one buyer of Texas real estate are Californians. But you think about the culture shock. When what I've seen the best agents do they go get their California real estate license so they can get both ends of that deal, all right? So Colorado here, you've got everybody and everything. But not only do you have like commerce, you got the cannabis industry driving a lot of change. I remember the first, the second out of the eight trips out here, it was on the tail end of the cannabis convention in, uh, in Chicago. Boy, that was an interesting flight. <laughs> got a nice little contact high, right? But, but you also have things like that that are testing societal waters, right? If you're a commercial agent right now and, and you have a expertise in cannabis, you're getting paid really well. It's a, it's a super good expertise, right? But then on the other side, how do you buy a home? All, my, all of my income is cash, <laughs> you know? And you can't really buy the house with that cash. How do you help people buy, that, buy the home? We're like a, a yeah, an expertise is actually a thing, right? But yeah, I mean, Chicago, every big city is having big city problems. I go to downtown Denver. It's, it's what Chicago looked like 20 years ago, right? right? So, isn't a thing. Be proud of it, though. Be, be proud of the fact that you can leave in 15 minutes, be out here, and then another 15 minutes, be out in the middle of freaking nowhere. Or to your airport, which is weird, <laughs> right? Right? So, but yeah, I mean, Economic issues are, 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 are everything right now. Recessions, people keep bringing up the R word. It doesn't really matter if we are in one. It's how people feel, right? So how you, how you gauge this stuff. You can actually see, though, how pe what people are looking for. You go beyond real estate search. You can look on anything here on Google Trends and see how, what folks have been looking at since the beginning of time. It is creepy, super creepy, okay? But, Okay, so let's talk about how you actually convey this stuff, right? So th these guys, they're brokerages, they, they I buy, they're realtors, but everything about what these guys do from a brokerage point of view really is consumer centric. Probably one of the few companies that actually are, they have to be, right? But look at the information they put out there, right? BB is not taking new clients at this time. That's literally, anybody been on vacation and you immediately get inundated by your clients? So your life hack, by the way, out of your clients about when you're going on vacation. I'm serious when I say this, you're gonna go on vacation for Thanksgiving weekend, tell your clients you're going the week before. I'm serious, I did that all the time. So that they come out of the woodwork and they're like, when are you supposed to be on vacation? I'm like, yeah, I lied to you, you know? But that's what happens, the sense of urgency that happens because of things like this, this information that's out there. This actually, this little message creates a lot of activity. Keep going, right? They talk about the commission. They talk about how they won three multiple offers, but they lost two. This is the reason why these guys have become a verb. 
They go out and say, hey, there's a 70% chance that this home will sell in the next 10 days. Go tour it soon. It's a hot house on Redfin. Your job is no longer to like fight this. It's to understand how it is that it works. Yeah, not a problem. We need to be within 2% of sales price from the moment we put it on. Not a week later. Not a week later. Not a month later. It's from the get-go. We need to have at least 100 pictures. We need to have, we have to make sure that this stuff resonates with, with consumers, right? That's what they talk about. They also do things like reviews. See what the information that gets put out there? Do you even know if, you're, if your listing has a review on it right now by these guys? It's not about you, it's about the clients that they're trying to get, right? Differentiation, remember that 10.7 points of information? This is it, that's what it looks like. Now, do you need to spend $20 million a quarter? No, my wife, some of you guys have met my wife, right? Uh, my wife seems like a really nice person when you, when you meet her, but man, she is just like, right? It's, it's brutal efficiency that she wants, right? So what she actually puts on her site, she just writes it out there, the 30 steps to buy and sell a home. Just puts it out there, puts it on her site and tells her clients, hey, if you have any questions, go to my website first. And if you have any questions after that, give me a shout. People stalk her site for years before they reach out to her. And this is just 15 minutes a week to make sure that her site is up to date. That's it. Get objections out of the way is what she does. Mortgage people, title people, lawyers all get up. They talk about what they do in the transaction. She puts it out there, puts it in marketing, uh, especially the mortgage update, the title update. That goes to a, uh, a, an open house client that she had just met. She's showing differentiation from the get-go. Um, Chicago's a lot like Denver. There are 15,000 in the city. There's another 13,000 in the suburbs. So literally within an hour's drive, there, there are thir almost 30,000 agents that can help me with my real estate transaction within an hour's drive of the, river, uh, of the lake, okay? You guys got 4,000 here, a little less to worry about. But then you also have the other associations that are around. There's a lot of choice out there. Differentiate yourself from the get-go. This is 15 minutes with a $5 a month website. Right? No. No. Nope. 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 Yeah. She's not tech savvy. And some of you guys have met her. Um, she's not tech savvy at all. She touches tech and it ex explodes on her. She's horrible. But what she did was, in her previous business, she was working with school districts that had three-year budget cycles. So she, it was in her best interest to get in touch with you three years before you could use her. So she's used to spending time to reach out to people who can't use her yet. But she wanted to gain trust and confidence and, and value before, before that, right? So that's all she did. And it's 15 minutes a week. That's it. That's all she does. She has an assistant now that posts stuff to Facebook, but she doesn't use Facebook. Um, she removed it from her phone. And Facebook, her page, is, an, is when she needs to take an ad and, and boost it for one of her listings, that's all it's there for. She hates Facebook. She didn't tweet. She stumbled on Instagram. She didn't really know that Facebook ads go to Instagram. She didn't know until somebody told her, I, I saw one of your Instagram ads. She's like, oh, okay, cool, right? Um, but it's stuff like that, that. We'll talk about that in a second, but she didn't know any of that stuff worked. We, we learn really bad habits in this industry. Really bad. We think being busy on Facebook is work. We think calling 3,000 people blindly is work. You, no, you should be calling 20, 30 people consistently, right? What work is for you new agents? Figure out an ROI quickly. Because people that train you most of the time are just like, just do X, Y, and Z with no, no way for you to track that return on time. But this, what this does before, during, and after the transactions, it helps. It helps before, helps during, and it helps after. And what she gets less of is phone calls. Because her clients go to her website, gravitate towards it, because there's something new there to learn every day, or they think every day, right? So this is, this is, this is five to 10 bucks a month. So Christina, you wanted a blog. That's what it looks like, okay? 
but make sure you're differentiating from the get-go, okay? Billy Go Home Girls, this is a great example of it too. They don't, they don't do any of the, like, the crazy, like, you know, 30 steps to buy a home. What they talk about is their neighborhood. Ann and Aaron share their home stories, right? These are actual people. They share the neighborhoods in which people are going to buy, 10.7 points of information, right? And the, the, uh, the businesses that are opening in Philly. What's Philly? Philly is cheaper in New York. They want people to live, live out in Philly. They want to kind of talk about and humanize the neighborhood. That's what they do. Fantastic website. This is a WordPress site. Conceivably, conceivably $15 a year for a business that makes a ton more money than that. Right? This is one of the, be one of the best websites I've seen. Um, this is uh, Abode, uh, Windermere's uh, Abode Real Estate Brokerage out in Tacoma. A friend of mine, Ann Jones, runs this, um, runs this brokerage. It's fantastic. But she stands up for Tacoma. She stands up for it. She's become synonymous with it. So every, uh, every year she hires a photographer to go out there and update pictures of the hot neighborhoods that they love in Tacoma to do business in. She goes out and takes the really good reviews and copies and pastes it off of her Yelp page and puts it on her website. And she has videos like this. If I can play it. So that video is on our YouTube page and on our website. On a Thursday before the Saturday meeting, that video goes to the prospective seller. It says, this is my team. This is what I do for you, right? So when we're sitting down on Saturday, we're not talking about this. We're talking about listing strategy. So instead of a three-hour thing where you're explaining, it's one hour. She's in and out. And what's cool is that if I get, I get this on Thursday and I realize I don't want to work with Anne anymore, by Friday, I know. How many of you guys are, have wasted time with a potential client that to turn around and use somebody else? Have them self-select. This lives on our, our YouTube page, website, and our email before, during, and after the transaction. Little simple things like that. So you want to use your phone? You can do that. Little simple email, uh, emails and, and, and uh, videos. You can even text to somebody. Looking forward to meeting with you. I'm going to introduce you to my team. Here you go. Live it on Facebook and your website and everywhere else. Okay. Um, now, there are videos you can do. If you want to go and use video, YouTube is a great place to go and talk about your listings. All right. So, this is a buddy of mine, Raj Kisar, does a lot of video. All he does is video, by the way. Period. That's it. Okay. He's now become really known for it. He figured out that you have about 90 seconds to make a really good impact, but the first 10 to 20 needs to be about the neighborhood in which the home is in. All of that stuff is canned. See that Cadillac Escalade right there? It is donated by the local Cadillac dealer, and now these videos play in the Cadillac dealer's waiting room. Fantastic marketing, okay? This video, again, is the best virtual tour you'll ever see. But because all he does video Right? He, he doesn't spend a lot of money anywhere else. He also has videos that, that talk about this stuff. Isn't this an awesome video? You think DocuSign is like unique? No. How you market it though is, isn't it? I use, I use DocuSign to make sure that your experience is seamless and quick and decisive no matter where you are. Simple videos like this. Again, record it, can live everywhere, send it to you on, a, on that Thursday before a Saturday meeting. Right? This is where social media, you put it on your YouTube pages. It's amazing what you can do from that. Transcribe everything you're saying, by the way. Written word needs to go into the general description. And if you can, caption it. 90% of video is viewed on mute, guys. 90%. Because I shouldn't be watching it. It's, I'm in traffic, I'm at work, I shouldn't be watching these videos. 
That's why when you see people talking on, in video, almost everywhere now, you're seeing what they're saying written underneath them. That's the reason why, okay? But if video can solve problems for you before, during, and after the transaction, you're good. You know, points of interest videos, you're seeing folks like this. I would recommend this if you've got a neighborhood that you're really trying to, to uh, you're trying to humanize your neighborhood. This is Burlingame, which is just outside of the Bay Area in San Francisco, right? You go to, you go to Burlingame because that's where you pop out kids, but you're scared of that stuff, right? This guy does fantastic video for his Berlin Game Buzz website. This is basically a blog. This, not only does he do video, videos like this, but he'll go and he'll interview the, interview the principal of the school in Berlin Game. Talk about the reasons why he, she loves being the principal there. Right? Um, new restaurants open up, they actually pay him to do these videos so they can put it on their social media. And he uses it in his. Okay? what these videos look like and how they're useful, okay? Um, points of interest videos, there's a whole number of uh, uh, ways to go out and share expertise, but neighborhood, uh, neighborhood videos like this, they can last forever, forever. Dogs, all he needs is an Asian baby. He's going to be good. All right? Again, one of these videos, you do it once, it lives forever on a YouTube page. Really cool stuff. No matter what you do, just make sure that what you're doing connects to the reasons why. So again, this is Ann Jones. So she'll talk about her, um, her duplex listing that's near Spa Tavern and Montemera Kitchen. And she tags Mont Spa Tavern and Montemera Kitchen so that anyone who, who is a fan of Spa Tavern and Montemera Kitchen sees the video. You don't need to pay for it, right? Tag it. Here's what you can't do. You can't just throw a YouTube link on a Facebook anymore and expect people to see it. YouTube hates that, or Facebook hates that now. You actually need to manually upload it. You need to treat each channel independently depending on where your clientele is, okay? But again, the initial concepts are the same. The why I wanna live in a neighborhood, right? And if you can convey value on mute, even better, okay? Even better. Really good way to, 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 take your, uh, to take your marketing and scale it. And if you go through the effort, by the way, to do this type of stuff, keep it on your YouTube page. Let it live there for forever. You need to know how to do it? You're getting to the time of year, guys, where you have kids coming back from college, hire one of them. Hire one of them. Hire a kid. Frankly, a lot of these kids can't enunciate a full sentence, but they've, but they've been taking a, U a GoPro camera and sticking it on their hockey, hockey helmet for the last 20 years, right? So they know how to do this stuff. Have them share, your, share the story of your next listing or for you or, or whatnot, okay? Um, for transcription services and caption services, rev.com. Rev.com. I love it. So rev.com allows you to take a video that you've shot. So you say you're speaking on it for three hours or whatever, right? You upload the video and some dude in India literally listens to your video, transcribes it, puts captions on your video, puts it in the general description of a YouTube page for a buck a minute. Literally some dude in India. And you can do it too. YouTube can do it. Oh, you did? <laughs> so Rev. Oh, really? If you're just sitting at home and I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do they use? Like, what did you use when you were doing it? Do they give you a platform? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow, nerd right there. Uh, literally, it's been like Jaheed from India that's done all my wife's videos. It's, it's, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, but it's cool, right? Rev.com, bucket minute, bucket minute, right? You use the service. Yeah, so the, the captions, as she mentioned, Google reads it, right? Google reads all that stuff. Awesome. YouTube is a thing you can do with your own, but don't worry about it. I will say, though, that it, that stuff is getting better. It's everyone having an Alexa and a Siri screaming at their phones. Uh, we're all a big product. We're making, the, uh, we're making their technology better. We're training the AI. That's the reason why Amazon's giving this stuff away for free, if not cheap, yeah. right? Yeah. It's creepy. You should probably know. Go ahead. Yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's cheap. It's cheap. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I I would say though there is no hard and fast rule on on video times, right? If it's if it's entertaining and and memorable, it could be it could be thirty seconds, it could be five minutes, it could be an hour. Uh, if your video sucks, it could be thirty seconds, it could be five minutes, it could be an hour. It's still gonna suck. Right, so it's it's how compelling and memorable it is, uh, more than anything. Remember the dog playing with the video or dog playing with the doorstop? That's what you're fighting. That's what you're fighting. Okay, social media. Okay, talked about it already. Being Facebookable, being tweetable is now a thing. That's like if you're giving people all this information for them to share, that's ninety percent of the work, guys. Right. The number one most shared uh, portion on my wife's website is here. Here are steps to keep your pipes from freezing. Her number one, she sends it out every January. Because it's not only is it, here's, here, here to keep your pipes from freezing, here's some tips. But if your pipes do freeze, here are three of my favorite plumbers that will give you a 10% discount if you mention my name. Little things like that, right? Give people something to share. That's 99% that's of the work. All you really need to do is that, okay? Because you have all this. They're not going away. But they're all owned by the same like five evil conglomerates, right? I'm on YouTube right now, right? Owned by Google, right? Go to where your clients are, be, be, be there, show up, go where they are, and you're going to be okay. Start with them. If you want to grow, grow. Go to where your clients are going to be. Easiest way to do it. Now, here's a really good example, though, because here's what the best of the best are doing. Um, the days of do I split my personal and my private information into two separate things, that's dead. Okay? Don't worry about that. Folks are gonna hire you regardless. Okay, they're gonna find out if you're a weirdo. It's okay. For me, I had a bunch of tattoos, I have more tattoos than my mother is comfortable in me having, right? But I attracted folks who, who were cool with that stuff, right? Who were you attracting? Who are you looking to build your brand with? Ann Jones, who we just talked about. Man, she does a really good job of using social media to brand build. She goes and she talks about her local market. She basically is an extension of her, of her business persona, right? And she goes and talks in great detail about why she loves Tacoma. Stand up for something. Stand up for something. This is the best way to use it, no matter where it is that you're doing it from. You're doing it off of YouTube? Great. Think about brand building, right? Professionalism, all the things that you stand for. I should be able to know what you stand for and why. Be human, be you. And don't be afraid to share what made you successful in the past to get there. And don't remove all the stuff that was ugly when you first started doing it. It's totally cool. Everyone, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chunky Asian guy in the real world. I'll, I'll be chunkier on Facebook and on Google. I'm totally cool with all of that stuff, okay? Be comfortable with who you are and you're going to be okay. Stop it with this whole like being everything to everybody thing. That ain't gonna work anymore. You all attract the clientele for a reason. Embrace that and run with it. Right? For me as a as an agent, um, I was very data to wisdom intensive, and my clients in Minnesota were very like engineer type 
which is why I loved RPR reports. I loved all these things that give, I wanted to be the one that inundated them with information. That was me. I was like, okay, they were like, stop it. Okay, we're good, right? My wife, totally different. My wife, it's young families who are, who are popping out their first kid, and she can just pump a lot of empathy into everything that they're going through. And they're dog crazy. That's what she does. Who are you trying to attract? Don't go, don't try to get everybody. You're just wasting your time by doing so, okay? But brand build everywhere you go. When it comes to ads, this is what a good ad looks like, okay? On a really good topic. Cybercrime is one of the biggest issues happening in real estate right now. The, 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 the amounts of dollars lost now is measured in the billions. Billions with a B, right? So, some really good marketing that you can use right now going into the, into the uh, holiday season for next year is how do you prep your home for sale? And it's, it, it's, it's more than hiding your guns, hiding your drugs, and hiding your, uh, your, your unmentionables, right? It is anonymizing your data because you become a target, Mr. Buyer, Mr. Seller, the moment that house goes on the market. And when it comes to technology, we have to start weaning you off of the things that you like. Your email address, Mr. Seller, is your social security number to your digital world. And six months ago, when you pressed that what kind of puppy am I poll on Facebook, some dude in Eastern Europe hacked your email. And that's how cybercrime happens. Take the video and share it. You can use it, it's on our YouTube page. This is what a good Facebook ad looks like now. It's not about your listing, it's about prepping your home for sale. With these tips, goes right back to her website. Anywhere from two to 300 seller leads in January come from it. Peak real estate search times, guys, especially for a market like this, it's seasonal. Late November, going into December and January. You all know that? Peak real estate search times is the holiday season. Why? I'm surrounded by family. I told them I'm gonna buy and sell my house next year and they give me unsolicited advice. So amp up your marketing at the end of the year. Amp it up. Do pop buys of your A-list clients. You know, drop off, toffee, or whatever you're gonna do right? But amp up your marketing. Christmas cards, they're great, but you know where they all end up? The trash. They all end up the trash. I don't even like sending Christmas cards to people that I'd like, right? Don't worry about that hassle. They all go in the trash anyways, okay? Just saying, you can do that. This is what a good ad looks like. Prep your home for sale next year, starting right now, right? When you market, we talked about that. One business cycle out with everything that you do. Start now for next year's business, and you're gonna be fine. And then you'll coast into the spring season. You've already got these people to go to look at your site, to look at your social media, to look at you, rather than the internet for information. That's the best case scenario to earn that mind share and to capitalize on it from the get-go. Just thinking ahead. Think ahead, think ahead, think ahead. What do you need? CRM, we mentioned it. Contactually is a good one. Um, whatever you use, just use it to the fullest degree. Uh, I would base any kind of technology on the things that you will give up only if you were dead. So my wife uses Gmail. I use Gmail. Every CRM must plug into that. Contactually does a really good job of that and sends emails out on her behalf. Really good stuff. Uh, she's now moved on to Realvolve, which is be better for a team, but this is cheap. It's like 75 bucks a year. Use what your brokerage gives you. I don't care. Use something. Okay? This is the emails that we talked about. See this? Here are the tips to prevent your pipes from freezing. That's what the email looks like. Send it out. January. Does it get cold here in January? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Today's not too bad, actually. But Jan do you have, you have a traditional time where it's like 10 below, no one leaves? Oh my God, it's, it's a verb? This is the most. This is the most Colorado com conversation I've ever had. <laughs> but, that, but seriously, I would I would actually engineer a, a really good marketing campaign around that. All right, if you're not buying cows. Listen to my uh, read my emails instead. Right, really good stuff. Right. Send out these emails though. Good CRM will do that for you and track all that stuff uh, from the get go. Okay, the jury the transaction stuff is actually easy. You, you, useful website, remove friction. CRM that delivers um, information in real time, we talked about that. 
I, I got to say that this is the number one thing that I have and that I had as an agent that helped me, period. Little MiFi hotspots. Does anybody have one of these right now? Little MiFi thing? I spend 75 bucks a month on mine. It allows nine things to get on to the internet via little MiFi from Verizon. Um, it's up to six gigs worth of information that can, that can be, you know, do it, done, done its thing. And I used to print out the username and password so my clients would just be able to jump on it no matter where, where we were. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's, a little, it's an internet hotspot. It's about this big. Here's, here's what you don't want to do, though, OK? Don't go to Starbucks and use the, use the um, internet there. That's how you get, that's how you get fished. It's where cybercrime happens. This is secure. Um, it's only for me and my clients. A little air of ex exclusivity there. Go ahead. Sure, sure, but it'll kill my, it kills my battery. Kills my battery. And what I have, I have an AT&T phone, but a Verizon hotspot. So at the very least, I've got 100% I've got of coverage no matter where I go. Yeah, but this, that little MiFi my, my hotspot is fantastic. It's the best write-off, talk to your accountant, I've ever had. Um, and I use it when I go on vacation. And it saves me, it saves me, 30 bucks a day on hotel Wi-Fi, right? I can use it anywhere. I can be productive in the middle of Disneyland, which my wife had to do once, right? This kind of stuff is amazing. Internet connection really is all you need for a lot of things. It solves 99.9% .9 of your problems. Um, but be careful with the Starbucks free Wi-Fi that's out there. Be very, very careful, especially if you're logging into things like your MLS, your banks, your DocuSign accounts, all of that stuff, because if it's not secure, I could be sitting in a parking lot watching everything that you're, that you're doing. And it's happened to me before I travel enough so that I get it. I checked into a hotel once and I, 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 I lit, up the, uh, lit up my uh, laptop and I got a phone call on my phone, which was odd. Mr. Hoddett, your credit card just got declined. Can you please give us your new your, your credit card number? Because they could see it, they could see it, me, me logging on see my name and everything. My information was out there at that point. And they could see my cell phone number. It's creepy. Okay. Yeah, VPNs are great. Slower internet. Uh, but all VPNs, too, they're not. VPNs are virtual private network, but VPNs are getting hacked now, big time. Okay. This is what a good questionnaire website looks like. Right when you're sitting down with a client, write, it, write this down. Ready to buy smart.com. Ready to sell smart.com. Ready to buy smart.com, ready to sell smart.com. So right before we start working together with a client, the daily group runs a big, um, um, Seth and Alice run a KW group out of uh, Maryland. They give you this website and say, hey, fill this information out. I want to know how I can service you better. And they ask really awesome questions like, Mr. Seller, if you were to sit in this home for the next five years, what are the top things that you'd do to improve it? So when I'm sitting down with you on Saturday, your words have said, You'd replace the roof. You'd put new siding on the house. Maybe we should do that, right? Clients say it, not me. Really good stuff. But do you need a do you need a website like this? No. Just have an email ready to go. If you're meeting a client on Saturday, send them an email on Thursday that says, "Hey, here's some, here are my five questions I need to know about you, so I can suit my services to you." Have it ready to go, and whatever you need. The very least, here the, the the question that worked for me in four different states was, who do you need, and what do you need to be efficient and decisive during your real estate experience? Because I wanted to know ahead of time if you wanted to bring your 1995 laptop and your mother-in-law and her dog to every showing. I wanted to know. Ask. Do it beforehand. Go ahead. Yeah, do some more. Don't sign that up because if you sign into that, you will get a call in about five minutes for your Maryland real estate needs. Okay. Oh God, no. But you can if you wanted to. If you, um, so my wife has got this on her website. She paid a, a person on Fiverr. Y'all heard what Fiverr is? Literally five bucks to get something done. 
Never pay Fiverr to make your logo. It's the same damn logo. Guys, have you, have you noticed that? Anyway, it's Fiverr. Some do, uh, she, my wife has a corporate Gmail account. Gave it to the, uh, the, the Fiverr guy. He made a nice form to email on her website for five bucks. She had a ready to buy, ready to sell, ready to rent smart. $15 it, it took her. It's fantastic. What's great is that uh, she now gives that re ready to buy, ready to sell link to her clients that refer her to other people's clients. And if they fill it out, they're ready to go with her. She knows really quickly if they're ready to share all this information, they're ready to go. It's a great, great way for, to capture referral business right? using things like this. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you're out there with uh, uh, transaction management solutions, um, talk about it. Talk about it early. Using dot loop, it's great. Does Ari Colorado offer anything, any kind of transaction management stuff? What do they offer? What do they offer? Oh, it sounds like a proprietary thing. Talk about why I should care. You're going to get a link for everything about this transaction, right? Be aware of it. Let them know early on so you're not trying to deal with this stuff when you're trying to get a transaction signed. Do this at the orientation more than anything. Again, apps though, you know, CRMs and all that other stuff now become kind of easy. Uh, you have apps like this. If you're, like for your video wonks out there, I can do a video like this 15 minutes before I walk into my next FISBO or expired listing account to show off how, set, how tech savvy I am. If I can do that, it's great. You can't, don't worry about it, but know that you can do an app, uh, a video like this with a potential new list with these apps, DShake and Cameo. Cameo allows you to actually write on the video if you wanted to on your phone. There's a bunch of apps that actually do this now, okay? DShake uh, stabilizes your video. But if you got a new new phone, it does that automatically for you, okay? Um, I love Adobe Spark. Allows me to make a really nice single property website for my listing for free. With this, you can make from an iPad a website that looks like this, free. In exchange, what Adobe does is puts their logo on the bottom left-hand corner. But if you're using Photoshop or anything like that, it, it, it'll take it. It'll take it right out. If this syncs with your Dropbox, anybody use Dropbox? Everybody uses Dropbox, right? Put your marketing in Dropbox. From this app, you can actually build a website that looks like this. And even buy a URL if you wanted to. Adobe Spark. Adobe Spark. Emails are fantastic. If you send an email newsletter out, MailChimp is fantastic. You can manage your emails and see click-throughs right there. Uh, MailChimp, uh, actually, majority of it is free. Um, Here's the thing with newsletters, though. Don't send me 25 different things you want me to read. Send me one. So I'm not going to read the other 24. Send me the thing that's most important. You think that it is, it's going to be for me. Right? MailChimp is fantastic for things like that. Um, Evernote. Anytime you can share your brain with your client, it's fantastic. What I love about Evernote is that my clients are using Evernote. Ask your clients at the, at the, um, uh, at the orientation. What do you use to make your life easy? Take it and then run with it. What I love about Evernote is that I can take uh, PDFs for all my Thursday, for all my Saturday showings, for example, and share a folder with my client. And my client on the other end of things can uh, record voicemail or voice memos into the folder so that when I'm, when I'm done looking at houses, we can go over what they actually said about the house over the Evernote, guys. Evernote can do all that. Ask your clients what tech that they use. International real estate, WhatsApp. Do you use it? WhatsApp. Oh, yeah. Yeah, WhatsApp is a voice over uh, uh, internet, basically communications and text messaging platform and video. I could send. Yeah, WhatsApp is great. International clients. If you're using inter if you trying to attract international business, WhatsApp is used a lot. Used a lot. Uh, my wife has got uh, because her her website's really robust. Y'all saw her site, right? Um, 
She's now attracting international real estate clientele. She's getting hit up on her WhatsApp account every day. And she's got a community of people already using it. Right now, her, her, her kind of nest egg um, international clients are expats. They're Americans living abroad. And they've made so much money living abroad that they're now investing their money for their kids back in the United States. And they're buying, they're buying houses cash, but they're using WhatsApp to communicate. Because in the middle of nowhere, China. They're in the middle of nowhere um, uh, in South America. And, and it's free. Yeah. You can see it's, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you guys have family, you can nerd out a little bit on it. It, it. If you're dealing with somebody international or even somebody who, like, corporate clients that go abroad, corporate clients use WhatsApp. Right? So just ask. Ask what he used to communicate. And WhatsApp, make sure your picture's there. Make sure your information is there completely. Certain accounts, absolutely free. Okay? Uber Conference is one of my favorite uh, apps. Free screen sharing, free conference call. Free. Literally, it's free. That's, that tech is so cheap now, it's not even funny. But I've done CMAs. My wife, I used to, my wife done, uh, does CMAs with people now when they're on a beach in Hawaii. Go ahead. Yeah, if you use Zoom, it's great. But Uber Conference, um, what I love about Uber Conference is that it's app-based. So it's really made to go on an iPad, really made to go on an Android phone and, a, and an iPhone. Zoom is more um, conference call off of a laptop kind of thing. So it was made for that first. That's the biggest difference that I see in the two. But it's free, too. Um, you got this Canva Plan app. I mean, it's amazing what a lot of these apps can actually do, right? You can scan your room with your uh, with this app. I think it's like three or four bucks, and it spits out this uh, this floor plan if you wanted to. Pretty damn accurate. Pretty damn accurate. Uh, I don't see a lot of historic homes here. I used to use apps like this a lot when I was dealing with houses that were turn of the century. They didn't have a lot of uh, good uh, floor plans out there, um, but it was great for me to go and kind of approximate measure a square foot of a, of a room if I needed to. Um, you're in a video, so I'm looking at you, Peggy. Clips is an Apple app that uh, will actually transcribe and caption your videos in real time. Yeah. You need to speak slowly and clearly initially, um, but it, it, it works kind of well. Oh my God. How I know it's, uh, technology is getting better is when my southern friends, with their twang, are starting, to, are starting to get really good captions from apps like this, because it's plugged into the whole Apple ecosystem, right? People scream at Siri all the time, and every, and every time, every time I'm screaming in Siri, it learns. It all learns because of that. Uh, for, yeah. Yeah, there are a couple of them that are, I've never used, I don't have an Android phone. The problem with Android's, um, problem with Android's, I don't trust anything that's in Android's, uh, in, in the Android store. It's tough because there's so much malware there. So, um, you know, just keep up with, uh, I would keep up with things like uh, uh, Gizmodo, anything like that, and the Android users forum. There's a big Android user Facebook group. God, just nerds everywhere when it comes to that stuff. But they'll teach you a lot about that stuff, okay? Um, Slack is like a work hub. It's almost like text messaging on steroids. What's great about Slack is um, um, I've got, I got friends who are now testing this. Because email has become such a place of garbage, like I don't know if your email has been hacked. I don't know if your I don't know if your uh, your uh, your lawyer's email has been hacked. Your mortgage email has been hacked. What what I've seen people experiment with is, I, as your agent, give you a fresh domain. Right. So it's your name at buysellovechicago.com, and now because we set it up. It's now plugged into Slack, and we can talk about business in a secure platform. 
It's been an interesting thing. Here's an email address just for your house transaction. What are emails? It's five bucks a month. Or five, uh, actually, five bucks a year for, uh, for Gmail. But at least it's secure and you know going in that it's a fresh email that has been um, unsullied by the garbage in the internet. And what's cool about it is that now I have direct access to you if I give you a domain. For, for if you do like concierge service, like super high-end real estate stuff, I've seen a lot of people have success with that. I'm going to give you one of my email addresses, right? So it's secure, adds a little snootiness to the whole thing. It's all good, right? Canva, one of my favorite tools out there. Uh, infographics like this, totally free. I don't know anybody who's paying for it. Who's paying for Canva here? Anybody? Does anybody pay for Canva? A lot of people use it. Business card templates, flyer templates, plugs into Dropbox. I don't know why you pay for it, but it's there. So for you, free. Free is always good. Okay, uh, otter.ai, if you want to get creeped out even more about technology, um, this is a, uh, it, it, it's a smart meeting solution. Basically, it record, it's, it's a voice recorder, and it discerns your voice and all the other people's voices in the room. It is weird. Oh, man, the company freaks me out, right? But they're not plugging into almost everything. They're trying to make this an artificial intelligence of uh, voice recordings. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Do it. I would use Google Voice for everything. You should all be using Google Voice, or something that allows me to not put my pri my my phone number on an open domain. Google Voice is fantastic because text messages get recorded and, and logged, so you can print them out. Yep. Yeah, Google Voice is really good at that. And Google Voice is your, is, stops all robocalls, too. And Google Voice, you can have up to 99 phone numbers for your cell phone number. So for you, don't make the mistake of putting your cell phone number everywhere. Yeah, because you're going to get a million phone calls, right? If you put your Google Voice number out on things like your listing signs and give it its own special ring so you know that if somebody's calling you off of that line, it's somebody who wants to see a house, right? Put another Google Voice number on your Zillow listings. You can do that too. But I would, I would not put your personal information out there because it's, it's such a commodity now, as Sonny mentioned here, right? Uh, RPR app, we were missing to talk about that. You guys have it in your, in your, yeah, fantastic. The app is amazing. Sending out a, a, a PDF of a, uh, of a uh, report, amazing stuff. By the way, take those reports. If you take a report and put it on your website, whether it's a WordPress site, right, or something else, Google reads the PDFs. And if it's embedded on your site, that helps your SEO juice. That's what I did uh, later in, uh, as, my, as a Minnesota agent. Every time I did a, a, an RPR report, I would call it a neighborhood update and then upload it to my site. The traffic I was getting was amazing. Okay. Next door, we talked about it. Just join it. Anybody know? Anybody in their next door? Uh, yeah, I, I think we need to start uh, looking at this, these guys a little more closely because of the fact that now they're now talking about listings and they're not talking about uh, automatic valuations of homes. Because now you have that to worry about. It's estimate, the open door, or the next door thing, uh, Redfin, RPR has got now. There's so many, so many out there that you can use. Yeah. Next door. Uh, most people don't don't go more than, what, five, 10 miles away from the home that they are in. They just go to a bigger one. I think potentially it's huge. And, and, and they're, they, I know that I've talked to their CEO. They see the potential revenue in facilitating transactions. But they need to be a broker, right? Right now, what's happening in almost all these groups is 500 neighbors together. Here's, here's my house. It's always a neighbor putting it up, not the realtor. The realtor's always awkward. Look at my new listing, guys. This is awesome. Um, but when a neighbor goes, hey, I'm putting, planning to put my house up on the market in a couple of weeks, 
I'm going to give you guys first dibs. That's what my neighbors do. Four homes sold this year in a Facebook group without a realtor. You know what didn't? The FISBO. <laughs> Guess who got the listing because, my, because they were paying attention? My wife. And she was unafraid to tell this guy, you're listing $80,000 higher than it should be. And now I'm, you want me to take it on? We need to put it in a, we, need, we need to reduce it by $100,000 in order to get rid of the stigmatism that the house has got, right? It's knowing what your clients have done. Follow their paper trail, it's huge. Google your clients, Google them. And stuff like this, this is Matterport tech. Have you guys all seen the ability to walk, walk through homes? Uh, yeah, man, I think this, how you market this is, is everything, right? This is a listing for one of my uh, one of my wife's one of my wife's listings from last year. This guy was a uh, stockbroker for a Chinese stock brokerage company. So basically, he was asleep when everyone else was awake, and awake when everyone else was asleep. Right. So what he what, what my wife told him was like, you know what? We're going to make sure you don't have forty two looky loos looking at your listing because that's what happens. Right. On average, based on the MLS, there were 42 showings of penthouse condos in Chicago. That's wasting your time. So instead, she made a promise to him that said, hey, you know what? We're going to make sure that everyone coming in is going to at least be in the running to buy the home. Sure enough, she created a process for it. Um, instead of 42 showings, they had four and three people brought offers. That's how you remove friction and using, using technology for it. Guys, your first showing is online now. Your second showing is online now. Your third showing is online. The real world one, who, were, who knows where that's going to be? But it needs to be a lot more serious, especially as we start competing with these iBuyers because the hassle is that. Hassle's a showing. So embrace this stuff. Uh, I, uh, one of my wife's last clients was a cop. A retiring cop from the uh, from the Chicago Police Department, and he didn't want he didn't want people going through his home because he had he had a gun closet. He didn't want anybody going through. They did this instead. It took a while for him to understand that this is probably safer. What do you think is safer, this or 32, 32 people just walking through your next open house on Saturday? What's safer, this or that? Right. Yep. Okay. After the tra transaction, you've seen the trends here? Useful site, CRM, relevant personalized information. This is the big one now. Homebot.ai is one of the, one of the uh, things that I have seen over the last year or so that, man, pretty amazing. What Homebot does is set, sends your, your clients a personalized um, approximation of value of the home along with contextual information. So for example, um, why sells a lot of condos in Chicago? A, a number of them are, are Airbnb available. This, this will not only send to that client, hey, your, your home is probably worth about this, but you're probably leaving a little bit of money on the table by not airbnb it out. Here's how much you can make if you, if you airbnb it out your, uh, one of your rooms. Do they actually do it? No, but it's, it's different information, right? Go ahead. Oh yeah, a lot. Yeah, Airbnb slapping. That's the reason why I think that uh, them kind of venturing out beyond beyond travel agent stuff is almost an inevitability because they're being cracked down everywhere. Right? Good. Oh, so you're using it? Yeah. Okay. The guy who built who built this thing. He's, he's, he lives here in Denver. Y'all know that? Ernie Graham, man, biggest nerd, the youngest looking old guy everywhere. Seriously, I didn't even know he had a college age kid. He's, he looks like he's like 30, but nice dude. He's been, been through the rodeo of real estate stuff. One of the few pieces of tech that have been like, okay, this is pretty cool. Not because of that, that dollar amount, it's because of like, it, it knows the wealth building aspect of housing. We've been tiptoeing around that for years. We've very seldom been able to kind of connect that. HomeBot does a really good job of that. Give it a shot. 
I can tell you right now, it's available for a lot of folks. Not a lot of people actually use it. I, I, I'm, I read the emails every, every time I get it. It's once a month. It's pretty compelling stuff. Because it's different from what I'm, what I'm used to. Okay? HomeBot's really good for that. Uh, we'll say, though, make sure you get a really good habit of getting really good uh, reviews. The number one review, number one question you get for a good review after the transaction is, you had a choice, why'd you use me? You had a choice, why'd you use me? Ask about a month later. The beauty about buying and selling homes is that people who do it travel in packs. It's amazing, right? They talk to their friends who've just bought houses, you know, they're buying all their crap from Amazon, and they talk about what their agent did and didn't do. Don't ask somebody at the closing table for a review because that's like, that's stressful for me. And now you're asking me for more business? That's no, right? And if you're not gonna help them move, don't ask them then either. That's when, that's when pizza and beer. That's your number one thing, right? Ask a month later. If you had a choice, why'd you use me? This is the, these are the reviews that my wife got as soon as she started asking that question. Really good review. We initially intended to do most, if not all, the home buying process ourselves, but quickly realized someone like Shay would be very instrumental in finding the right place and negotiating the right price. That is somebody that wanted to go with a discount broker. I hate that word discount, just a broker. But one of those brokerages that gives you back money, right? They're on the third transaction now because he's now he, he's become an investment buyer. You had a choice. Why'd you use me? Really good question to ask. Okay. This is somebody who's taken taken it to the nth degree. This is BurlingameProperties.com. Okay. Raziel Unger every year asks 32 of his top clients to be part of his marketing. This is the trend that you're going to see uh, hear a lot of in the next five minutes while I have you guys. Okay. How can you get your ambassadors to love on you actively. We're raising a generation of narcissists. Let's use them, okay? One, these pictures, see these pictures? They make really good closing gifts, really good closing gifts. So all you need to do is hire a really good photographer for this, right? But what he does is every year he adds more to his client base and they share their home stories. Philly Home Girls did it, Raziel Unger is doing it, Melissa and John McGuire, sales at Google, uh, head, of, head of finance at Insightly, they talk about the home buying transaction. They talk about the neighborhood. They talk about working with Rod's Yell. What'd you love most about the home buying process? What surprised you most about this stuff? They get it out there. This is the best advertising you'll ever get. This is the only thing Rod's Yell does. The only thing he does. Yeah, he hires a photographer and uh, his assistant goes out and asks these questions about the experience about buying and selling a home. Why? Because we've been talking about the buying and sell, buy sell transaction for years. So much so that it doesn't matter anymore. People just don't listen to us. But this stuff matters, right? Beautiful website, information that's out there. In general, what you can get out of your A-list clients is amazing. That's why get in a good habit of doing it, right? One of his A-list clients came up to him and said, there's not, a, not enough Chinese speaking real estate websites out there. Can I translate yours into Chinese? I'll do it for free. She did. Chinese for free. He had to hire a Chinese speaking assistant to deal with all the traffic that he was getting because of it. Had to license her up because of the fact that now he can send referrals to other part, other other members of uh, uh, other members of the California real estate community. Right? This is taking it to the nth degree. Amazing stuff. All he does is that, by the way. And the Burlingame buzz, the videos about why you want to move to uh, to Burlingame. Clients who love him on the back end but information about why they want to use him before, during, and after the transaction. Only two things that he does. Okay. But you'll see a lot of this stuff. I, I'm seeing more and more now agents and brokerages doubling down on offline events. Offline events now are the A-list clients. What are you doing to get them out? This is Dave Oswald, a buddy of mine in, um, in, uh, in Minnesota. This actually would work here, right? He spends $1,500 for in-state and out-state girl and boy scholarships. Because $1,500, you know what that gets you when you're going to college? A book, one book, right? So what he does is the, um, the scholarship program, every year his A-list clients, he, they get invited to lunch and they pick who wins the scholarship. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. These kids, guys, you think they care that he's an old dude? No. They will use him. 
Because in Minnesota, remember, people don't leave. They come back, and when they're ready to, to come back home, they use him. The recapture rate, 10 years later after he started doing this, almost 70%. Right? But until then, you know what he has? Their friends, their family, mom and dad. All he does is this. I mean, think about it. 6000 bucks. It, that's, that's the amount of waste we do for $6,000 in a year could go to some good. Talk to your uh, general uh, counsel. I think you can do this here. Most states you can. Like Oklahoma, you can't do this, right? But it's, uh, that's Oklahoma, right? Scholarship program. You look at my wife. My wife, again, dog crazy, right? So what she does with her Facebook is she allows other people to tag her on their Facebook, right? One tail at a time, once a month, shares her dog-friendly listing. They share it off of her website. Coralie and Kenan both buy houses for my wife. See this Canva thing here? This was all the people who, um, who rescued a dog and the dogs that they actually rescued. This goes out once a year at the end of the year. Like, this is all the good that my clients did, rescuing dogs. You rescue a dog in Chicago with one tail at a time, you get to name it. It's amazing, the post-transaction like, like stuff that happens from there. But do what you do. This would never have worked for me. Never. I'm not a dog dude. But my wife, dog crazy. She's one of those weirdos that, she's in the middle of nowhere in Minnesota once. We were just out. We stopped for, we stopped at a, at a, at a road stop. We opened up the back of our SUV and some stray dog jumped into the back of, of, our, of our car, right? But that's her. Whatever works for her is great. She picks Valentine's Day to celebrate her A-list clients. Valentine's Day is perfect, right? You capitalize on all the marketing leading into into the uh, into the uh, spring season, and she rents out a um, for a list clients a hair blow dry out facility, and from 9 a.m. to noon, Saturday and Sunday, these women get their hair blow dried, and they go on to dinner because my wife just reserved dinners for two throughout the weekend. She doesn't buy the dinner, mind you. She just reserves the dinner, and then the email sends out, "Hey, a list clients, get your hair blow dried." And let me know if you want any of these reservations for Valentine's Day. People don't think about Valentine's Day in that context, right? But it's cool what she did. Mortgage and title team up to help pay for this. And then she just has her assistant call at the local hotspots in Chicago to, for, to reserve dinner, dinners for two. And in the email, it's, it's, this is how in-depth her CRM is, right? Husband gets the first email. A-list husband, first email. Corey, you want to save Valentine's Day? You let me know if you want any of these dinner reservations. She doesn't get an email from you. She says it's your wife. We haven't heard from Corey. If you want to save Valentine's Day, let me know. Post-transaction, your CRM needs to actually do that. It's the best way to kind of nail the, the post-transaction experience. Really awesome stuff, right? And if you're like allowing people to love on you, it's fantastic. Offline events, again. She is right now uh, going to be at her, uh, her Saturday offline event. And there'll be pictures of it online if you're friends with her on Facebook. Get your Christmas cards done in October. That's what she's doing. She hired a photographer to come out. Photographer, the Christmas, Christmas photographer is cheap, right? And the setting is also cheap. They're just going out there and getting their Christmas cards done. Have people want to love you on their Facebook more than anything, right? And make sure, guys, at the end of the day, your ambassadors are talking to you. This is the best use of social media, guys. It's what other people say about you. This is that Mama Tribe uh, Facebook group I told you guys about, right? Somebody asked for a realtor, right? What's that? Dude. Dude, you go in there, and they are very viral about their breastfeeding tactics. I mean, it, it is... I have learned so much about how not to raise my child in that Facebook group. It's not even funny, okay? But it's, it's 10 to 15,000 people who are, who are popping out kids. I, you know what I learned when I popped out my first kid? I need 1,000 square feet just for him, and then another 1,000 square feet for his junk. That's what I learned about kids, right? So inevitably what happens is that somebody asks for a, um, asks for a, uh, uh, a real estate advice, and mind you, 
you know, my wife, she's one of those unsolicited, unsolicited advice everywhere. She, she learns about all that stuff and shares that information. But when somebody asks for real estate, Shelly, Tiffany, Jessica, and Lauren both said Shay's awesome. This is the best use of social media, guys. Getting people to want to love on you the way, the way they love on you, where they want to, not where you force them to, guys. Attract the like-minded people. At the end of the day, what you can do is you act on it, right? You don't need to be there. But have your ambassadors do the A-list A -list lifting for you. Because this is all we need. If we had more of our people after the transaction talking to us, we'd be okay, guys. How you want to make people feel is this. See this? That's the goal. When you're with your marketing, with your branding, with the information that you're putting out, what you sh share on social, what other people share of you, this is how you want people to feel before they use you. You nail this, everything about what you do is going to be just fine. Be Facebookable, be tweetable. Share information that make people want to rave about you where they will rave about you. Be future proof and think scale about everything that you do. And more than anything, make sure you're putting the onus on your friends and your family, your sphere to love on you. Guys, this is the best use of social media, marketing, branding, everything, this. At the end of the day, guys, this is what people need us for, this. The transaction, figure it out, but it's the emotionalness of the transaction. How I feel during the transaction, how I feel afterwards, capitalize on that, we're gonna be okay. You guys good? Questions? Three hours, man. Read. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thanks for being here. Um, and if you want this deck, just leave your card and I'll, uh, I'll get it to you or I'll figure out a way to get it to the association. But if you want it, let me know. Thanks, guys. Oh, and there's my information if you guys want it. If any of you guys are going to our convention in San Francisco, a lot of the folks who I just talked about, I'm, I'm moderating panels with them on it. So the Razi Onger of the world, uh, my wife, a bunch of other folks are moderating a panel with all these guys, and you can hear it direct, okay? Thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it.